The following show is for mature audiences only. Shy City Sports. The tape never lies. Hard for Leno to stay consistent all year long and and uh, and help us with that experience. And Wait, these guys. I would say we know, gotta drop. It, uh, one of the negatives Aleno's been, been consistent been all year long, long fellas. Fire this motherfucker now! That's it! End the show! Close the curtains! Because that's the fucking biggest lie ever told! You guys know that song that's like, First up, JJ. Matt, when you went back and looked at everything yesterday and, you know, talked to Coach Laser, were you okay with David only getting 11 carries? Yeah, well, I mean, you see the, the first run of the game, it's a big run. And then, you know, I thought that uh, in a perfect world, you'd love for him to get a few more. But, when, you know, we're scoring 36 points. We'll pay you some mad money, like big dollars to shut up. I think probably, JJ, when you look back at the fourth quarter, there's a couple times there where, where uh, whether it's, you know, him and CP, where you're, you're handing the ball off. We were trying to stay a little bit aggressive. No chance. No chance. But for the most part, I, I think... Uh, uh, Probably 15, 15, plus, 15 to 20 is a really good number. No chance. No chance. For David and for different reasons, uh, I thought we were moving the ball other ways. As well. no fucking shit. What more Thank does you. 32 have to do? What does he have to do? Jeez. Phil, I almost thought it was a joke when we were talking at halftime. I'm like, well, at this point, you know, we we saw David Montgomery house the, house the uh, 80-yarder. You know, he needed that. He needed it. But we talked about it at halftime. Go if you're a patron, go back and listen to the halftime show. We said he's gonna be removed from the game plan. Big plays are nice. They're good. Six rushes at halftime. He finished the game in a 37 to 6 win with 11 carries. 11. Does that ring a bell? And as you all know, you know we we've changed some things, right, schematically uh, as to this offense and what it was even two years ago in 2018 to try to. Um, uh, work around the strengths of our players and and um, uh, he had 80 yards on one carry and he finishes with a with 113 I believe it says on the on the bottom scroll and as you all know you know we we've changed some things right schematically we got to get David the ball man look at this from afar and you see kind of what's happened the last year you know your option is declined, um, you know, you replace them with Nick in week three. It would kind of seem like maybe things are headed in a certain direction. But now he's come back in, he's played well, and if you really are believing what you're seeing, what, what does that mean, like, for him? You know, maybe not with the Bears long term, but just for his, his career as a starter in this league. Well, it just, it goes to show, number one, um, the resiliency that he has. You guys know the greatest teammate you can be for the Chicago Bears. I will pay you some mad money, like big dollars, to shut up. And the last three games, uh, his performance individually has been pretty good. Uh, there's been a couple plays here or there that he would tell you he wants back. Big plays are nice. They're good. But now, I think yesterday goes to show, you just look at that first half, what, what he was doing, and some of the throws that he was making, um, on his own, and, and I like to say when things are gray and they're not always perfect, can you make plays? Walter Payton here, he would have eight carries. I'm serious, yeah. and that's a problem, Shane. The other part of this that's really good for, for Mitch's sake, and I don't know if you've all have felt it or not, I know I have, is that, um, you know, whether it's a, a crushing loss against the Packers, <laughs> or whether it's a crushing loss against Detroit, <laughs> When you have a 10 point lead, uh, the way we lost, or whether it's a, a really convincing, fun win against the Houston Texans. He stayed in his lane this whole entire time. He's never too high, he's never too low. That's the part that I like about him. Offensively, if you guys were down on that sideline yesterday, you would feel as our team collectively, all three phases, people were in good places. Uh, we already know Leno. We it seemed like something about Chicago Bears and left tackles with four letter names, man. Where was another piece of shit? You know, I, I just can't, I just can't understand 
How the fuck it. do you just put these guys out here with no accountability? The day we won. It was the score looked right, the plays looked right. But as a fan, there's no way you can build amnesia. 100%. Right. Okay. So I was happy at the Bucks game. That is the highlight of this whole season for me was the Bucks game. But right. if if we can change our mind after the Bucks game and go, okay, we've just lost six in a row. We suck. Yeah. How is the Texans game supposed to change that? Exactly. Fuck it. Oh, yep. He's going to figure it out. In year five? He's going to figure it out in year five? Come on, it's man. way over. That's why I keep on saying here, let's put our fucking bar a little bit higher. You see a team that I despise playing fucking Jalen Hurts right now. Uh, Carson Wentz has a fucking cap number next year of $59 million. They can't even move off of this guy. Exactly. $59 million. They still went out and invested into the quarterback position. Not in Chicago because we got Tyler fucking Bray here. That, that is That's the no, reason yeah, why exactly. Nagy That's why you want Pace's all life. these people fucking going. Right there. And girls, it's your boy Draft Doctor Phil, Phil, bringing you a funky dope Christmas track. Have a fire, Coach Nagy. Christmas will be the best day of the year. Bears fans know that he must go. No identity makes it clear in year three. Have a fire, Coach Nagy. Christmas, tired of the lies at Alice Hall. George needs to do the right thing to have some balls and fire them all. Oh no, the BU show center stage where all can see. Nagy talks down to you, another blowout on national TV. Have a fire coach, Nagy Christmas. Fair fans need some cheer. No more swaggy, have a fire coach, Nagy, Christmas this year. Have a fire coach, Nagy, Christmas will be the best day of the year. Bears fans know that he must go, no identity makes it clear. Have a fire coach, Nagy, Christmas, tired of the lies at Alice Hall. George needs to do the right thing to have some balls and fire them all. Oh no, the BU show set us things where all can see. Nagy talks down to you, another blowout on national TV. Half a fire coach Nagy Christmas will be the best day of the year. Oh, by golly, have a fire, Coach Nagy, Christmas this year. Keep it at a hundred. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. And so the Bears are sending their compensatory fourth round pick to Jacksonville for Nick Foles. Keeping it 100. 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 They kept it real love. Dynamic to a latch of love The smartest man at Dr. Phil Breaking down the film Never a problem Kick it straight Most shows focus on stats We focus on the tape We keep it in a hundred Never running east to west We coming with that truth Cause that's what our fans expect Cut off the freaking anchor Move forward to be free But don't you worry Shane's got the dumbest tweets It ain't no secret Phil and Shane got some haters But now the mouth stuck Like the two and now and later Debaters Stars get kicked Like Coach Tabor Cuts had to be me, we added a barber moderator. Up and down, boys got you double checking. Sad sack, strolling like a fool, drunk texting, flexing on 
on the truth Cause you know they'll never change Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Shane For hundreds is what we do when we're breaking down the bears Fuck a play or a captain, all of the uptairs Never lies, the truth, you see But I, we are, so there's no babies like Maybelline Straight to the truth with acumen and facts We got a sad nerd, but he's not just giving nerds that crash, big impact like Max Sat Every Wednesday night you got the smartest man like a fat kid with fun dip We're back better than ever and we're keeping it a hundred Keeping it a hundred, baby Give me a hundred Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man Keeping it a hundred 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 Keeping it a
I love when you get fired up. You get me fired up. Do I get I, you fired up? I uh, yeah, absolutely. Like you're my. I feel bad because you're one of my go tos that I that I do. There's a. I've got an inner circle of people who I uh, will text or I'll message or do anything like that. And I'm still not completely back because you can tell. Like first of all, if I move my <laughs> high school hat, my high school see. hat is. Let's pull you in big. There you go. There it is. Corona high. Corona high. That is my high school. So there's the still coronavirus. We got Corona <laughs> high. That is the one thing I always hate too. Like everybody's like, "Oh, you're from Corona." Uh, I'm still. I'm wearing a Travis Matthew hat, so I'm not completely. I'm not completely so. I. You know. I think last week. Yes. I. I was so defeated. Mm -hmm. That I felt that that energy is what propelled the Bears. So I'm trying not to go overboard because my natural inclination is to be like, bitches, we're back. We're going to the playoffs. <laughs> we're winning. And that is how I feel. Right. I, can't, I can't have that outward exuberance because I don't feel like it's good for the team. And I know that they kind of feed off me. So I want to make sure that I'm a little I, – I, I want to I, – you know, you got you to gotta treat them – like a, uh, your girlfriend in high school was treating you where she's got to give you a little bit of the cold shoulder and make you work for it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've got to do that with the Bears right now. I can't openly be like, we're back, mothers, and we're going to crush all these teams. We should beat the fraudulent Vikings. That's that's goes without Agreed. saying. The Jags, then we're, we're at eight wins, and then we're going to have to win or get in in Lambeau. Dun, dun, dun. We know what's going to happen. We're going to be eight and eight. And I love all the videos, and I love everything that I, you guys are doing. You know that Matt Nagy will be our coach next year. And I don't – I just – I want I'm you – I'm against you. I'm against I want, you. I don't – I want you to – my chips in. Stop saying what you want to have happen and then start to embrace reality. What in the Chicago Bears history of forever has led you to this point where they're going to eat that much of a contract – of Matt Nagy for a guy who two years ago was the coach of the year, whether you, you agree or not. There. No, it's not. It's not. I'm going. I'm not trying to advocate for him. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. Like I can sit there. You, we can sit there and watch Die Hard, and right. you can say that Hans Gruber is not going to fall <laughs> off the side <laughs> of Nakatomi <laughs> Plaza. That's fine. You can sit there for two hours and try to convince me that he's going to get away with this shit. It's not going to happen. Wait. I just. Wait. You've seen the movie. I've seen the movie. We know how it's going to end. Is it a Christmas movie? Yes. Okay. See, that's why I don't agree, and that's why they're going to fire Nagy. So, if, Adam, if you if, were if, if you were could, making the call, Adam, if you yeah, were making the call, what would be? Adam Rank is the the new team president. You're going to make all the calls. What what are you doing? I would probably depose the general manager. Because yeah, I love the word. I feel like he's this the roster's not terrible. Right. It's there's some nice pieces to it. I don't know. I might even give him another chance. I don't I'm the I don't get I don't blow okay, I don't blow out the coach because I want to know who you're advocating to bring in. Who is the hot name? Who is the Sean McVay who are bringing in? I think a lot of the things that we go through with Matt Nagy is a lot of the things, and I know this because of fantasy football, it's the same shit that Andy Reid did for years. I don't know if you guys remember this. There were games, and I know this because I always had Brian Westbrook on my fantasy teams, where he would just forget that Westbrook was on the fucking team. And he would go into the thing, he would go into interviews and be like, what? We didn't give the ball to Brian Westbrook in the second half. But and be like, no. Their offense no. was always functional, though, Adam. That was that's the big difference. Philly's always had a functional offense. That Chicago's is, three years into this, and it's not even. We're getting excited about beating the Texans. That's well, we, where we are. Well, we we, we should have beat. We should have beat the Lions too. We should have. Hundred percent agree. But that Look, that's where, Adam, you have to be. You're the president of football ops now. Mm -hmm. So you need to, you have to weigh what happened with Detroit. Because say you beat Detroit and then you beat the, you're in a completely different You're football. in the seventh spot, yeah. Yeah, you're in a different era. Air. Of course. And so now that loss is solely at the hands of the head coach. 
And that's why, yeah. that's why if I'm your GM, I'm pleading to, with my president saying, listen, we got to make a move with this guy because he hasn't found his identity. I guess Mitch came out tonight and basically said, hey, they're finally doing what I've asked them that I do well. You know how many boot, naked boot, and action passes I saw in this game? Of 30. 30! Uh, okay. <laughs> so, I, it was like I, every whoa. play were booting out of there. I love, I love Mitch's revisionist history. Um, <laughs> no, listen, let me tell you something. Go ahead. After Harrison Smith hurt you, you were a different player for a while, and it's taken you. It's taken you. You know what? It took you getting benched to finally get over it. And I'm sorry to have to be the one to say that. No. But that that is the truth. Remember last year against the Rams when they tried to run the option, and he was just. Oh my God. It was he's, the worst play that I've ever seen in my he's life. He's still not the same runner. He's still not the same runner. He doesn't know whether to slide, whether to go out of bounds. You see him, and he's now he's always falling forward, and it drives me. He's overthinking everything when it comes to that, and that's you. You hit it, man. That's when things changed for him, and that's that's unfortunate. And when I look at, and, and, and I like there's no, that though. There's I no, like ex- that. but there's no excuse, obviously, for the Detroit loss, except that you can talk to every fan base in America, and everybody will have one loss. You're like, oh, we shouldn't have lost that game. We shouldn't have done this. We shouldn't have done that. Everybody does that. The NFL teams, NFL coaches, you coach yourself out of a game. Like, listen, I watch enough Chargers football. You should be. You if fly out here. My wife's a Chargers fan. I want you to really dissect the Chargers. You will be. You will be. You will be signing Matt Nagy to an extension if you had to watch any more of Tony Anthony Lynn. Lynn. Anthony Lynn. Tony Lynn. Not a great football coach. Does Not a great, great head football coach. Oh Ms. my gosh! Miss Rank has her her fiery you, vo- uh, Lynn voodoo doll. It is so bad. <laughs> like it is the end of the game stuff is only surpassed by the end of the first half stuff that nobody sees because nobody gives a shit about their games, and so they're making all. So that's a it's a common problem in the NFL. I'm going to put out a little theory and I know that everybody, I, I, I know we want, I know it's fun to want to fire the coach, but have <laughs> we noticed for me, have we noticed though? Go ahead. The two, the two Notre Dame kids, Alex bars and, yes. um, Mustafer. Uh, Mustafer. I was, yes. I keep thinking like star Wars, Mustafa. <laughs> <laughs> I know the lava planet. <laughs> Darth Vader. Had, my, how does Darth Vader, you lose your goddamn arms, and you're like, you know, I'm going to build a house here. That's the last planet that I would want to live on. I know you hate sand, Darth Vader. I get it. But in any event, those two guys have been playing amazing. And I I, I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't that think once amazing should be thrown at bars. Not yeah. shitty. How about that? Not shitty. There well, which go. is a humongous upgrade but We're, we're in us. standards, exactly. Yeah. We're I, like... All of a sudden, this 1990 fucking Corolla looks like a Beamer. Yeah, that's well, where they, we're at. You you took it to the car wash. You got a little buff. <laughs> exactly. oh, good. You're fine. But let me ask you this: They've been playing, but the, once the offensive line started to play a little bit better, yes, the offense looked better. You're like, how is this possible? You're like, oh yeah, it's like all of a sudden this car, which you thought was a piece of shit, this Corolla. Once you put tires on it, you're like, oh. That made a huge difference. Exactly. Leaving it up on blocks was not. They're 100% right about the offensive line, but here's where you stack pieces together. It's Green Bay getting blown out. Then come back 10 points up on Detroit, your rival, after you've prepared. Remember, you had 10 days to prepare for Green Bay. You got blown out. Then you come back and you lose. That number 10 keeps showing up. Now the kid, number 10, goes out there and he balls out against the Houston Texans. Is it false hope? Is it something that the Texans are so beat up, David Montgomery's running? I can't get behind Nagy because I've been saying this for three years. You know that, Adam. Me and you fight about this for three. But the reality is I feel like if you don't change the head coach, you're going to continue down. He doesn't know how to use his personnel correctly. A Shea in the open, you saw it. 11 carries in a blowout win for David Montgomery. 
I said it. You saw me in there. Imagine if this dude had Walter Payton. He'd have eight carries, <laughs> right. and that's it. Well, then and he that... doubled down on it, Phil, and said he needs 15 to 20. He's done that three times this year. Three. Three times. And that, the Come head on. coach is saying Adam, that. Adam. Adam. But when you're, when you're in a situation like that, and let's be honest, I... <sighs> we deserve better, Adam. Do we? I yes. Yeah. All right. Come yeah, on. I'm joking. Come Listen, on. You've been always... dying with me. I listen. I feel like this was an agreement my dad made thirty years ago, where the football <laughs> oh, gods, Jesus. the football gods asked my dad specifically, "Do you want to win multiple Super Bowls, or do you want to have the greatest team of all time?" He chose the greatest team of all time. <laughs> like, hey, Dick. Like, what are you doing? Like, why would you do that? But that's the thing. So that's I don't know. So that's the thing. I just don't think that Matt Nagy is firing him is going to change all that much have we are we really that enthused on their choices that they've made at the head coaching position over the years going back to ever no. since they fired lovey smith bringing in mark tressman not going with bruce arians in that instance oh. john fox the first time you oh ever hire God. a retread coach it's john fox he would have been better off going with adam gase which would have been an embarrassment but at least he would have been done with it quicker and <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I don't have the faith. And I still sort of believe that Matt Nagy could be an acceptable NFL head coach. I think that what we've seen when Bill Lazor is now, you know, calling the plays or whatnot, the coach I'm actually sometimes bummed out at is Pagano. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. and I'm like, I, I really do believe, and I said this on Twitter, and I think a lot of people glommed onto it because I was responding to somebody. Because they were talking about how the Broncos might be firing Vic Fangio. And I'm like, if you dicks ruin our life by hiring Fangio for no reason, no reason. Why is J John Elway, what the, like the NFL. <laughs> That's a great point. The NFL has now come to the point where anybody who is a young offensive minded coach is getting a head, is getting a, is getting a, a head coaching job. If you know Sean McVay, you're getting hired. Like, that's the rules. And John Elway's like, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to find the oldest coach who coaches defense. Like, what the? Why? If he would you know what? The, this is the problem. If he wouldn't have done that, and this is revisionist history, the Bears go 9-7 and seven last year and make the playoffs. I feel like they find one more win. And they, you know, they beat the Vikings twice, they beat the Lions and all that stuff. And then we're talking, then we're in a different stratosphere. I don't know if we'd still have Mitch and would have gotten Nick Foles and everything like that, but I don't know. I, to me, there's just so many different things. It's number one, you got to get the quarterback right. We still haven't gotten the quarterback right. It's, as bad as it's been trying to find a head coach, it's been worse trying to find a quarterback. And I don't know that it's changed. And you talk about false hope. To me, the false hope is with Trubisky. That's not the answer. Really? So, so you're so not do you, believing in him. Do you trust bringing Nagy back next year and letting him get his guy in the draft? You want to, and I mean, then if you're bringing, say if you bring Matt Nagy back next year and then they go quarterback in the draft, that's more than a one year commitment to Matt Nagy. That's fine. I mean, who, really? who, who, who are the coaching prospects that you're like, we got to have this guy? This is the must have hire. I don't think that there is one. I don't Phil, think that there. Well, you know what? Phil, tell him your boy. Tell him your, tell him your, your number your one blueprint. is Jim Harbaugh, right oh, there. Geez. I'm gonna tell you why. He just signed an extension, right? Did he? He's getting, no. Isn't he getting extended or no. something? Yeah, they're gonna offer him a thing to. I think essentially really? being a thing yeah. that, where he could. I know walk, he though. his favorite, his dream job is the Chicago Bears job. Then, I'm, then I'm, so I'm, let me, that's fine. Okay, let me if, get this out of the way, and then you could comment. He's maniacal. <laughs> He knows where the shit stinks at Hallis Hall. He knows Ted Phillips and all of the shit. And he knows the character of the charter franchise of the expectation. He's a lunatic. My coach, our coach, the only time you've seen this team win, Adam, is with a maniacal guy. That's Chicago, but it's also Bill Belichick. It's also Parcells. It's also Jimmy Johnson. These guys are involved in the game, not in the plays. Jim Harbaugh will have his team prepared. There's no accountability in Chicago. As a Bears fan, 
as an analyst. I was so embarrassed on that Saints game and what transpired. And to see this team play the way they have, it's been pathetic. This is a game where I broke it down, analyzed the whole thing. The Texans, Deshaun Watson versus... <laughs> Someone's got their It's Matt Nagy swan song. Sounds like. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. The ice cream truck coming. Hold on. Hold on. Ah. <laughs> you can't make this up if you tried. So the Jim Harbaugh. Matt Nagy's calling him. Tell these guys to stop telling on me. Tell Phil, no Harbaugh. Keep me, for God's sake. Keep ah, me. Hold on. Look at that. This is You're... a crack operation here. It's okay. No, I had to make sure that my uh, my daughter has her uh, Chromebook headphones for oh, school it's tomorrow. Okay. She goes oh. into the classroom tomorrow. That's a way of life now. I got to have all these everybody. alarms. Yeah. Alarms. Oh, we know so, all about it. Alarms. I got to have a, you know, and I have like alarms for to make sure that I make an Instagram post and do stuff like that. Can life I say, is an Go ahead. I'm sorry. Please. I cut you no, off. I no, finish. no, please. Everybody loved Jim Harbaugh when he's oh, coaching shit. the San Francisco 49ers with a guy who can't even play in the league to the Super Bowl, changing his offensive philosophy to incorporate the talent surrounding him. Yeah. You talk about a culture. You talk about accountability. This guy comes in here as a former Bear and with, knows the league knows how to run all of this shit rp everything re history repeats itself i'm not worried about jim and if vic gets launched you know who his defensive yes. coordinator is going to be and vic will come back with jimmy hardball you'll have the fuck what do they call those quarter what does he wear fucking the khakis, khakis. The, khakis. the fucking khakis <laughs> will be back do we I, get greg roman we uh, listen yeah. greg might have an opportunity to interview for the head job here because he's another guy that says Listen, my father taught me, because I was the young assistant coach, you as a head coach have a responsibility to look at the talent, and you don't run your offense. You analyze what they could do, and yeah. that's how you attack. With Matt Nagy, it's an indictment today what this kid said. Say it what is. you want about Mitch. He's telling you right there that the coach wanted 2.0. In fact, he wanted the fucking sunshine from fucking uh, – Remember the Titans and Nick Foles. He wanted right. him to come in here and throw the football around. It didn't work. That's your. That was his decision. He was. It wasn't GM Pace. It was Matt Nagy's handpicked guy. So everywhere Nagy went in regards to fix this, he gave up the plays. He's done all this stuff. He can't use his personnel right. Even you. How can you, as a a fantasy football guy, David Montgomery, fucking strides it for 80. Neil Anderson was the last back to run for 80 yards and a touchdown. All the hate this kid has gotten, Shane. He can't break the big one. He stay. He don't see the hole. I'm watching it every week. He's one of the best backs we've ever had. Yeah, 100%. Be because he, he has no holes, and he's making stuff. And then he finally gets one. He does the big FU to all the critics, right? And the head coach, instead of champion and put it on him he, special teams guy Corderell, former receiver get <laughs> yeah, out ten there more, run 10 more times with Corderell in the red zone you know actually Cordero is a really good back i think because he wears the number 84 it throws people off well, he's good the last he's not the, a lead last, dog bro the last time he had 70 carries in a season he yes. won a fucking super bowl so i'll just put it out there <laughs> it's true he, when he played for the Patriots. Who was their quarterback? Exactly. <laughs> Who was their coach? I mean, he's, a, he's a gimmick guy. He, listen, this dude, Corderell Patterson, there's no questioning his toughness, his tenacity. He runs hard. He's but just, don't you think he works better as a number three guy that you can yeah. use and no, so no, match no. him I'm, up? I'm, I'm, I'm stunned that they wouldn't play Lamar Miller more, and that now they lost him today they to lost Washington. lost Miller today. Can you believe it? Yeah. Ah, it. it's listen. It's a guy you picked up off the street. If, if Ryan, you want to, no. if you really want to drill down on these players, and who cares? Like it's fine. I will pick up JD. This JD McKissick's actually their best running back in Washington. For any fantasy tips out there, um, 
But here's, I was keeping you fantasy free tonight. I was trying to, yes. I kept I, you. I, 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 but I was, but I had to defend it because it's also the same way. If you're blowing the hell out of a team yes. and David Montgomery runs it 30 times and <laughs> rips up his hamstring, then you've got to answer those questions. Like I get this, that, these man. coaches, these coaches are always damned what they do. And so I look back at that Lions game, and obviously they were aggressive. I, that's not the way that I would have done it. But if they would have ran the ball into the pile three times, punted it, and then Detroit still did the same thing, they would have been like, "Why? This is what happens. This coach is too conservative. You guys are playing scared. Of course you're going to lose." To me, not it's still here, it, not it, here. That's I know not. I know not here. But I'm still saying is the outside perception. The defense should not have given up. A t- I mean, I even knew. I when they were when Detroit was driving down the field. I'm I'm sitting there. And I'm like, okay, they can't. They're gonna give up a touchdown because I know how this fucking works. Just don't let it be before the two minute warning. And then <laughs> right, Marvin right. Jones scores with 84 minutes left. And I'm like, of course, <laughs> yep. of course now. 84. So they're going. They're going to go and they're gonna throw the ball again because I know how this works. Because they smoked. They smoked David Montgomery in the drive before they gave up the punt that allowed that touchdown to uh to to to, to Marvin Listen. Jones. But the thing is, if the defense doesn't give up those big plays, if Mitch holds on to the football, they hold on to the football. Like you don't have to throw, you can drop back the pass, see everybody's covered and just run. And it's the same as a run play as if you handed it off to David Montgomery. Well, he, he did still that doesn't... the play before, Adam. He's just... You That's would think, fine. listen, you would think, I'm pushing back on you here. I got a reputation to uphold. I got you it. You would right. think he drops back on second down and he scrambles up and runs for five or four. Now it's third and six. No, it's actually third and three. Yeah. So you should just run the ball there. Yeah. Shane and Phil and Adam would come on and defend that. If they fucking punted. O'Donnell would fucking shank it. We all know. He would fucking shank And they would get it at the 40. And if that defense let up the touchdown, that's not on the fucking head coach. No freaking way. What happened was you went back to pass after you saw that. That, to me, is the most arrogant, ignorant football thing you could do. But who's calling? Wait, is, is Nagy calling I'd that sh- play? How could he, if it wasn't, remember how uh, fucking Adam fucking Coke Eyes Gates fired Williams? Then Nagy should have been like, you're fired. Get him the fuck out. You should never call another pass play. And really, watching that play and what the defensive end did to Effetti and, and Mitch... Obviously, he didn't see it. A ball, he was about to throw what? it. What? He didn't. Mitch didn't <laughs> see it? His pocket <laughs> awareness? Hey, hey he, he, had ran bad, the, he ran on second down. He had bad pocket awareness? <laughs> this is terrible. Uh-oh. I had no idea. Some Mitch fans upset with you, man. He did play better. Let's be realistic. Go ahead. I, I understand. Let's get Matt a close Nagy. up of this guy. Matt Nagy is not the perfect coach. I get it. He's still learning on the job. I always fear about getting rid of these coaches too soon. I'd rather, instead of giving these retreads 30 years to do whatever, I'm like, I'm more willing to give, you know, Nagy a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. He's still learning it. He's still, I, I, again, maybe this goes back. This goes back to what I was saying about what decisions I would make. And I, I do applaud Ryan Pace for some of the plays and some of the pieces that he's put together. And I think that Roquan Smith has been very good. He's made some good draft picks. I think Jalen Johnson's good. I, I like Chase Claypool coming into the into the league a lot, and I kind of preferred him over Cole Komet. But I'm now, obviously now – I'm starting to think that Cole Komet's going to have a George Kittle-like breakout oh next season. Oh, my God. He looked right? great on Sunday. Great. Yeah, I'm really – I'm Powerful. really starting to I'm really starting to come around on that one. Perhaps you could have traded. It only down. took our head coach twelve weeks to play him. He, but <laughs> again, took oh, another hold shot. Hold on, he's hold like, on. Listen, listen. These listen. are plays I wanted for Cole. Listen, listen. Here's here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. If I'm going to absolve Matt Nagy for the play calls and the things and saying that was Bill Lazor, we've yeah. got to give Bill Lazor the credit for breaking out Cole Komet. Listen, I'll, sure. I'm a, I'm very fair. I'm very honest. 
Yes, okay, like I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm not giving Matt Nagy. Fuck that. You don't get credit for that. <laughs> You're not calling the plays anymore. I will admit, I will not blame you for what happened in Detroit, but you cannot come and take credit for the mighty Met, KMET. That is not going to happen on my watch. <laughs> mighty Met. I love it. So I have to look at Ryan Pace, and I have to ask him why the offensive line has been terrible for so long. There's, oh there's my what is there's nothing happening there and that <laughs> needs to be you want to talk about having an identity and having a strength it is so difficult to do that if you do not have an offensive line and when an offensive line starts to fall apart we see what happens to talented rosters this year it got Dak Prescott injured in Dallas and we see how terrible that team yes. is now without an offensive <laughs> line so I got to get rid of the person that's building that, and I let, don't know. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this, Adam. Who do you do you think that there was an, an a move made on the offensive side of the ball this past off season that Matt Nagy did not want? No, I, I listen. These I guys, think Matt Nagy went to Ryan Pace and said, "Effetti is going to be a guy that's going to fit into this offense." I think he went and said, "Cole Komet is the tight end th that I want and that I need in this offense." I think I don't know for sure. But I think Matt Nagy is running the show on offense, and he's given Ryan Pace the list of guys that he wants. That's why Nick Foles is here, and it failed. He, I just, I don't know. I, my faith in Matt Nagy is very, very low. I mean, the offensive genius stuff, we're in oh year three, God. and we. what this all comes down to for me is, like you said, there's no identity. It should be David Montgomery, and he still refuses to do it. I think it's because of the line. I really do. And I think that if Cole Komet was his player, and I could see it because he was with Kelsey in Kansas City, I will give him credit for that. If any, I just think that they were – I think Pace was dumpster diving. And that's the way that he's tried to build the offensive line. Like, I see it. I'm an Angels fan. And that's the way that Billy Epler was trying to build Go a Dodgers. bullpen. By fine – fuck the Dodgers. <laughs> Champs. Who, did they win? Yes. <laughs> oh, good for them. Got a trophy and everything. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, so Justin Turner got a ring, so that's cool. Yeah. So I'm in. And so um, I'm a Cal State Fullerton guy. Yeah. There and he go. was there. So uh, Kenny O'Brien. Kenny O'Brien. Of course. My <laughs> my point is is that he's he was dumpster diving on the offensive line. I think that Nick Foles was a quarterback that Matt Nagy had a lot of faith in because they had worked together. And you see that with all these coaches. They always they always go to the familiarity, and I think that's a fault with a lot of these coaches. I would have rather have seen I them there. take a different – I wish they would have got I, – I don't know, because I know I, – I really wish they would have gotten into the Cam Newton business because you can run a lot of the same things that you want Mitch to do that you want Cam to do. And as a matter of fact – I remember when uh, they first brought in Mitch and everything that he was doing. I, the quarterback, the backup that I wanted him to have was Kaepernick because I thought that he could have come in and run that offense s similar to the way that uh, Mitch did before Harrison Smith ruined him. And that would have been a – you don't have to change the offense if he goes out. But so there, there was some misses. I mean, a lot of coaches make misses. It, it, it's what happens in the league, you know, and it's, it's one of those things that – a lot of like any fan base is always going to go back and be like, ah, oh, we should have done this and ah, oh, we should have done that until they build that offensive line out. It's never going to change. So you're looking at a GM who extended speed bump, Charlie, AKA the walrus, Charles Leno and Bobby Massey, a guy that, uh, what did, uh, Bruce Arians say to him? Nice kid. Terrible <laughs> football player. <laughs> so You're this is lying. what your GM, this is the truth now. This is what your GM, my father said to me, 72, he shouldn't even be playing in the NFL, let alone starting on the charter franchise. And every week I pointed out at him, you know, you watch it. So I totally agree with you. But at some point, the buck has to stop. It, it can't be this Ernie Accorsi cockamamie mccaskey let's have faith in these blog boys and they're going to get it right the corporate world is going to get it right the football gods have shined upon like you said the 80 best ever team ever best player to ever play 
best team ever. That's what we have. I can't live with that. So now we got to change that, and you got to get football people in here. You work at the NFL Network. There's guys out there that can coach circles around Matt Nagy. I'll put my fucking hat in the ring with him any day. People laugh. I'll, sh I'll show you. I can prove it. But the reality is knowing personnel, whatever you got, you got to let the cream rise to the top. It's very, it was, a coach goes out into the football field, and in 10 minutes they know who the best players are. They, that's the talent that you need to have as a head coach. If you can't identify that Cole Komet needs to be getting the football and that David Montgomery is your identity, then the problem is with the coach, not the GM. That's why I say my piece here that you got to get somebody else there to make the offense work with the pieces of the puzzle that you have. Otherwise, you're going to be rebuilding every guy. It's the same shit. So I'm not asking you, let's blow it all up. I can tell you this. To answer the first thing you said, I'll say this, then you comment. The McCaskies paying $10 million to a coach, that's like me and you going to Burger King. It's nothing to them. Nothing. It's, they're a billion dollar bit. They could do, they could pay 20 coaches. They could pay 20 coaches. All these. I, Sam told me. You know what an owner is? Someone that goes to the game and watches it. That's it. That's what they do. They're not involved. And if they are, they're fucking in the way. So they could pay for everything. They're billionaires. They've made it off the charter franchise from people that are in Europe, California, wherever, buying swag, tickets, traveling stadium everything is making money for them the nf you're about to get a new package deal right for the nfl sunday tickets coming up that's going to be another six billion whatever if it's four billion last time it's going to be eight billion whatever it is always going to be money there's always money to pay somebody at the most important position aside from quarterback that's head coach to turn this thing around cultures are changed look at college campuses they hire a different coach. He brings a different mindset, identity, and culture. Those things and accountability isn't here in Chicago. It's a BU culture, and that's why I say after three years, you can't find your identity, and you're still learning on the fucking... Who else is able to learn on the job at the highest of levels? <laughs> Fuck, I've never seen anything like that, and I won't make a freaking political joke here, but you can figure that out. <laughs> no, I get it. Did I sell you? Can we fire this guy now? No, we're gonna keep Nagy for one more year. <laughs> oh Jesus! I we're gonna do it. <laughs> so we you're are, gonna you're gonna launch the GM and keep Nagy? Is that that is the game that plan? what you you want pace going? I mean, I I feel like if we need to if if everybody's calling for blood, and I don't know if you if I've, they lose to the Vikings, we'll see. There's a there's a difference between it. I I, I hate to say it, but it really does matter. How the how the season ends? Yes, because I, I agree think with you. this is what this is one of the things that doomed or should have doomed Mark Tressman in his first year, where you're like, you can't beat the Eagles when they have nothing to play for, or this exactly. dog s Packers. That that should have been the worry right there. At least you know what we have seen one season where Matt Nagy put it together, and we're talking about a missed double doink away from going to the second round of the playoffs. We met, we had a, we Cody Parkey missed the field goal in Miami that would have given them a second round bye. They would have been playing host to the Rams. Next thing you know, they're possibly in the NFC Championship game. So I I've, I've seen it. Yes. Okay, we have seen there is some tangible evidence that this can work. You know, things everything had to come together, but that happens with a lot of teams. And I think that if they go out there and this is and the the effort that we've seen the last 2 weeks and I will give the defense a mulligan against Detroit because you know what? You guys have been carrying the team for so long. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there. If you go out and you win in Minnesota and you beat the Jags, it's inevitable at that point. They're coming back. Both of them are coming back. But if they lose, if they lose to the Jags, nobody's coming back for week 17. So <laughs> if Mike Glennon beats you, you mad? Uh, they went back. Shit? They, they went yes. back to Gardner. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Minshew's right, back. back. But, yeah. but is that isn't that pretty shitty though? That that's the that's the bar Jacksonville 
for us. Yeah, that's going to be the is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's the way that, it should, goes. that tells you that keep, everybody should be gone it, to be keeping it a hundred. <laughs> Adam, you see, you, you gotta, gotta give gotta give credit to Fangio for 2018. There was 39 percent motherfucking turnovers, well, and there. nobody knew what to expect either. This is and everybody figures things out in the they NFL. They figured Fanagi out real quick when he went to 2.0. It was like hell no. But they were eight and eight, and he got champion that he kept control of the locker room. I always say it doesn't matter about the fucking locker room. Everybody's gonna love you because they're all getting paid. And if you're nice to them, they're happy. As long as they're getting, paid. if they hate you, then you know that you're doing your job. That that Chicago media, even a lot of my boys, they don't get that. I always push back with them. I'm like, no, fucking head coach has to have tough love. They gotta love to hate them, and then. Like LT with Parcells. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, there. Let's right. talk a lot of football. I want to yeah, play got, a game. I got to play I, a quick I gotta, game. I got to go, buddy. Oh, you got to bounce. That's right. I'm sorry. I got a family. Oh, I had to rank these games. I'm Jeez, sorry. One Next quick time. one. Yeah, one okay. quick one. One all quick right. one. All right. All right. Quick one, one quick one. Cause it's, all right. It's, I want to be able to use the graphic that I made, too, for you. All right. <laughs> rank. These keeping it a hundred. The suspense there is killing me. Wow. God, I had a list of eight things. I'm gonna cut it down to one. Favorite Christmas movie then. There you go. Keeping the spirit. Die hard. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you and Greg Brown. Knife right through his heart. Oh man! Why? Uh, how do you? It is. It is a Christmas movie. I don't well, know what you want from me. Where's this rank? I want her take on this. She, she believes that, or she like? No, 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 no. She loves White Christmas. Okay, I like. You know what? White I don't Christmas. know. I don't know if this counts as a Christmas movie. I kind of consider it more of a New Year's Eve movie. But the original Ocean's Eleven was centered around <laughs> like that was a New Year's <laughs> Eve movie because New Year's <laughs> Eve was central to the to the point. Like that is part of the plot. I will say this though. Yes. I guess it was last year. We went as a family to go see the new Grinch movie. And my wife loves the original Grinch. And, you know, it's a classic. And then my daughter and I, we went to see the Grinch in the movie theater like every week. Like I took her every Saturday through Christmas. <laughs> so we went. I've really become fond of it. I, I think it's a good movie. I think they did a nice job with the Grinch. I think if you watch the Grinch with Jim Carrey, I don't like the way that they portray the Who's. Like, I don't think that's a good yeah. one. I don't, I don't like that. And I, I kind of like Cindy Lou in the new the Benedict, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch movie or that that version of the the 2019 Grinch. I think they make the 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 they don't they don't vilify the Who's. Yeah. They give they give the Grinch a reason for not liking Christmas and everything, and it kind of ties up really nice. And I think they do a a, a really good job with it. And so. It's funny because I think each of us have our own generation of movies that we're grown up with and we're attached to. My daughter has been watching, and my two-year-old, my boy, uh, they've been watching that Grinch nonstop, so I'm really into it. Uh, my daughter and I have a date night every Friday. We watched awesome. it last week. I asked her this morning, I go, hey, what are we date nighting this week? She's like, the Grinch, like like I'm an idiot for asking of anything else. Um, <laughs> she's like, the Grinch, like what are you talking about? <laughs> She's like, as sure, like as, as sure as I am we're going to watch the Grinch, as sure as I am that Matt Nagy is going to be the coach next year. So <laughs> it's just one of those things that's a fait accompli. I want, listen, I'm upset. I'm yes. upset about the Bears. I'm not happy. I'm now retrospectively so upset about that Lions game, even more so than I was in the moment. Because knowing what it could mean, we would be back in the playoff race. But it's one of those things. Um, but let's fix the offensive line. Let's move forward. We're all uh, Christmas story. I see Jose yes. talking about Christmas story. I think that's a really, that's a great one. I always like using the, um, like Scott Farkas, but Grover Dill is always such a great put down <laughs> of people. Like if you really want to dismiss somebody who's being a troll, like you're like Grover Dill level. <laughs> like you're not even Scott Farkas. Like you're not even a good, you're not even a good heel. You're the secondary, you're the heel to the heel. So that's always, that's a good one. I'm trying to think, think of other people ones. People agree. That I, people agree. Did you like those claymation ones? Remember the Rudolph? What was the heat miser, freeze miser? Yeah. That, that was my what? favorite one, the heat miser. 
Those were always classic, you know, and um, they're good. You know, they're nostalgia, but you come yeah. back, you go back and you watch it and you're like, what was I watching? Like, what was this? <laughs> I, you know, let me say this. Yes. I have Amazon Prime and they just put scrubs yes. yep. on. I've I, never watched I'm, I'm, it. It's good. It's my favorite sitcom of all time, I believe. It Over is one of those, the office. Over the office. Wow. Parks and Rex is really good as well. I liked How I Met Your Mother. I love but How I, I Met Your Mother. I how it. I Met Your Mother is great. And That's I remember great. the first time that I watched it all the way through. Mm-hmm. And because I had watched it in fits and starts and all this stuff. So finally, one time, I'm like, I'm going one to the end of the series. Yep. So f- at the end of season two, or maybe it's the end of, I think it's the end of season two, the beginning of season two. Sorry, Shane, if this is, if this is, if, <laughs> I'm, always, if I'm, he always takes those big breaths. Don't he's like, take, oh, don't take it personally. This is no, you're, you're talking about how I met your mother. And I was thinking about me talking to Greg Braggs, but that's a story for a, for, <laughs> for another day. show. Yeah. <laughs> when end Barney, of season two, when Barney flies to San Francisco to convince Lily to come back, <laughs> yeah. like it's sad. Like I was like oh, really yeah. shook. I'm like, oh my God, I love Barney. And so I love the series. I will say this. I've only seen the alternate ending, the one that you can see on YouTube, because I was watching it. And as we get close to the finale, mm-hmm. I went to uh, I went to my neighbor who lives next door, obviously. Uh, no, my neighbor who lives in Chicago. No. So you have three homes. One of the neighbors. I was yeah, I, I was sitting there and I go, hey, I'm, I'm starting to put some things together. If the wife dies and he ends up with Robin, I'm going to burn your house down. <laughs> My neighbor got into the house and deleted the last three episodes that I had on the DVR. And I've oh never wa- I've never seen the last three episodes. I think the uh, Gary Blauman episode might actually be the last one I ever saw. And if you're if you've never seen How I Met Your Mother, after you get to the Gary Blauman episode, go to YouTube. Find the alternate ending. That's the way the show ends. That's the way the show has ended to me. It is. I still love How I Met Your Mother. It's still great. But Scrubs, if we're doing rank these, I'm gonna have Scrubs number one, The Office number two, How I Met Your Number, How I Met Your Mother number three. There you go. We need an alternate. List, ending. We need an alternate ending for the Bears if Nagy's staying at him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got your last shot. Thank you, Adam Rank. You are the man. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I always love when you come on our show and grace us with your passion. You're the best at making analogies. I always say that. I make them off the top of my head. People are like, I love your. Ana- I go, Adam Rank's the best. He's the oh. king. Well, I feel like I let you down. Wednesday's always my most difficult day. So let I'm at the down end. for what? I'm, I don't know. I felt I could have been better. But uh, <laughs> Come on, don't do Listen, that. Wednesday's a burnout day All for right, me. Next so time, we'll put you on a Thursday night. Please. We'll switch the there whole show. Do you want to do, do that? Whatever. Yeah, next time. In the new year. Oh, no. What's the, no what's, the, what's the fantasy season's over? I'll be fine. Okay. I'll be back, baby. So after... The football season. After Plus, I've had, Black, after Black about, Monday when Nagy gets if launched, Nagy we'll have him gets on. fired, you have to be on that show. Uh, of course, because we're going to go live. I'll be there, and then I want you there. I'll be there. You still owe me like three Jimmy Graham dances. Don't no, think I forgot that. Cole commits so good. I don't. We're absolved. <laughs> you don't make the rules on this That's one. True. So All you, right, fair enough. You owe me them. I All love right, you, bro. Love tell you guys. Ma, tell the wife, the kids. Everybody, right. we were asking, and God bless you, man. Be yep. safe. Stay safe. All right, you guys do the same. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thanks, Adam. Absolutely. Adam Rank from the NFL Network. He is. Greg the... Braggs is so happy. Die Hard as a Christmas. He's got another one in his corner. Die Hard as a Christmas movie. I just never have seen it like that. Do you want to play some more Rank These before we bring on our next guest? or? I sent him out the link, so. Oh, okay. Once he gets on, let's go with your favorite Christmas dish. Just real quick, Phil, why don't you address that? There's been a lot of people asking with Claude. Oh, okay. Yes. Claudio, I'm sorry. Let's do some breaking news. Let's. We got to use these toys we have. That's Shane. right. Right? Breaking news. The tape never lies. Network breaking 
News. Listen, Claudio the Barber, cut it out of keeping it 100. And the tape never lies. He obviously has had COVID. He was going to come back tonight, but his whole family, unfortunately, has caught the COVID. And he's, his wife is very sick. And he's told me, please let everybody know he's feeling better. It was one of the worst things he's ever had to go through. Please be cautious with your children, letting them stay over with friends and doing that kind of stuff. It's really imperative. Like, I know some people aren't feeling it and think it's wherever you're living is something. But over here, it is getting worse and worse. And Claudio is the proof of that. So please send out your energy. Send out your prayers, your positivity, as my father would say. Got to say prayer, put God in your life. You know, it's it's not easy. Those are my family, Claudio and his his wife Melissa. So yeah, keep them it, in your thoughts and prayers. He'll he'll be back when he's when he's back. You know, he, yeah. We told family is always going to be don't first. Don't worry. He's yeah, like, sorry, that's... man. I'm like, sorry. Please. Yeah. Please. We can wait a few weeks before we fire him anyway. It's fine. <laughs> we already have people pining for his job. Yeah. Nice, Claudio. Jeez. Car. Smoke weed every day. I miss that. Cars has been taking barber classes. Oh to yeah. Possibly take over for Claude. <laughs> he only cuts bald-headed men. <laughs> so Adam Rank would have been perfect for him. Nerd alert. You know what that means? We got our nerd alert. <laughs> There he is, my I don't boy. Cut hair unless it's with a floby. I mean, like, <laughs> they're, they're so style. That's a blast right? from the past. The floby. The oh. suck cut. If that doesn't age me, I don't know really what does. What's going on, gents? How are you tonight, sir? I was thinking about I'm, you today. I am ready for 2020 to be over. Oh. Uh, that's that's for sure. Uh, so yeah, we're we're surviving. We're getting through. And, Did, uh, did you get yeah. to see any of the rank interview cars? He's a he's on board with Nagy. Pace being launched and Nagy getting another year. That's I, his I mean it's the standard bears, right? Yeah. You've you've, you've got a guy with one year it's left true. on his deal, you can fire him. You got a guy with two years left on his deal and he's untouchable. So Nothing would surprise me less than them hiring like Lewis Riddick, who's a big fan of Matt Nagy, and trying to move forward that way. Would shock me if both of them stayed. He's I think. he is interviewing in Detroit tomorrow. Detroit Lions. I where's mean, your where's your stance on Nagy now? Honestly, I I think I've said it. He's to me he's the the Mitch of, of coaches, and that he shows you some good, he shows you some bad, and you never know you know, consistently play in, play out, which one you're going to get. It's almost you know, like I think, Forrest Gump. Hey, you never know I thought what you were going to get. Never know what you're going to get. It's like a box yeah, of it, chocolates. It, it, well, I think it's uh, life is like a, a bunch of wide receiver curls. Uh, <laughs> or, I, don't, I don't know where I was going to go with that one. Um, I like that you know, one. You know, I think I think what's interesting about him that I also often forget is he was one of the younger head coaches, right? And for every McVeigh that can do it, not everybody could do it right off the bat. So I think, I don't know, like in eight years, maybe after he's gone somewhere else and figured out how to get his own ego a little bit out of the way, he might be better. But right now, he's just... That's the thing. I, I honestly think that's what it comes down to. I really... I, how do you come out repeatedly and just so often? I mean, in week four, he came out and said, "Yeah, you know, Cole deserves to play more. Cole's got to get on the field on the field more. That's on me. That's on us." And then he he gets four targets over the next six weeks. Yeah. And then finally, he's playing. You have David Montgomery doing house calling one finally that we've been waiting for, doing it, and then he gets ten carries after that. I just. And then Matt Nagy, oh, you know, he needs 15 to 20 carries every week. That's who he is. That's how he's built. And I'm like, what are you 
why are you coming out and saying that he's gotten 15 carries three times this season? Three. That's, yep. But that's you're coming out as the leader, the guy that's going to be making those decisions. You're coming out to the public because you're smarter than everybody else. That's the shit that drives me nuts. You come out and you're, you're telling everybody what they want to hear, but you're still behind the scenes going to do exactly what you want to do. And to me, it's just... It, it, it's coaching malpractice. I mean, 33 to 7, you're up and you're fucking, oh, we wanted to stay aggressive. What, what are you doing? 33 to 7. It's standard, sadly, though, for most of these NFL coaches. You know, none of these guys earn genius monikers by pounding the rock 40 times a game, right? Yeah, but like, it's not even that, Cars. It's not no, even, I, know, well, I don't think anybody's like, asking for 40. 15, know, 15 like, 20. Listen, McVay if you're up doesn't even 33 do that, right? like, to 7, you got to establish the run and just get the game over no, I, with. You're pound listen, not, them. I'm not, Build confidence I'm not in your line. Agree, you're weakest. But that's, but that's sorry, not the way these new, these new age guys do it, right? Like, when you looked even at McVay's Rams, right, it wasn't getting Gurley 15, 20 carries a game. It was getting him 15, 20 touches a game, right? And they'll, they'll throw that in the passing game. Saquon Barkley, the same, right? Like those days of Ezekiel Ezekiel Elliott getting 20 carries a game plus a, a number of catches, those things don't happen weekend. Derrick Henry is probably the only guy that comes close to that amount and carries. But, but Derek, the, the thing about it is, is every one of those teams that you've named has a viable offense each and every week. Chicago does not. I don't disagree, but I'm just saying, like, that's the way that these – these Cars. You can't, genius you, guys are. You, you can't carry the torch of these guys. You have to look at what you have. And clearly, gun to my head, I think it's, it would take me all of 10 minutes to say, okay, the best player on the field, that's Kalmak. It's easy for me. On Best player on offense, David Montgomery. How you can't incorporate that in your philosophy or your identity, that alone should get you at least 15. If 15, we're not talking 40 care, 30 care. No, I know. You know what I'm saying? So that's where the the negligence, the con artist comes into me. And then in this game, it's like it should should have been a layup, an 80 yard run on the very first offensive play. One with which since 1988 everybody, we haven't everybody had. Everybody knew it was coming, too. Neil Anderson. And then we all texted and joked, he's not going to even be in on the next series. And he wasn't. That's right there is fireable in my mind. I think he got one carry in the third quarter, correct? And you came out with the ball. Yes. I that believe one carry. One carry. <laughs> That's it's unbelievable. I don't me. get it. We joked at halftime, uh, Cars, on our the Patreon channel. Yeah, we, we said, said it. Watch this motherfucker. He's going to be removed from the Shane, game Shane, actually, I go, no way. I go, I'll give you right, Shane. I go, he can't. You were like, he's going to. And he did. And he did. Now, listen. I swear to you, I'm saying this in all honesty. Everybody can learn from their mistakes. We've all made them. That's how human humans learn. The best people own that. They admit it. They stand out in front. They admit their mistakes. He hasn't done that. And that's really a part of the problem in my mind. Once well, he does, I think you could turn around and say, okay, you beat the Vikings. And you start building this consciousness of 1-0. Two and zero, oh, three and zero, oh, and you do that, then you can make people believe. But I just have no faith in this man. I don't want to ruin our segment, but no. But the thing about it is, too, Phil, and I mean, I can't for the life of me see. I, you know, he's making these comments, and when he came out in the post game and talked about how he, he was praising the consistency in a good way for Charles, <laughs> Charles Leno. Leno. <laughs> yeah, Ch Chuck's going to be a big part of our show. I know you want to elaborate on that because he was on one of our. Oh cohorts my God. shows right. here lately oh my god did you guys happen to see him on greg bragg's show cars dude i'm watching him on tape i just see the same thing over and over and over again 
He's on Bragg's this show. I think we got some clip. We do. Here's we a, have a clip of it. Yeah, Let me pull play the clip. it for our audience. Yeah, Shane, I got it right pull here. the clip. Hold on. I got it. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. We're the three best friends that anyone could have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. And we'll never, ever, 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 ever leave each other. We're the best three friends that anybody could have. I mean the three best friends that anybody could have. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that a was a clip man. from the show. The yeah. wall. Greg laid like, down worse than Matt Nagy does. <laughs> I got so fired up, cars, in the presser when Nagy said that. I honestly, I go, that, you can't. The fucking, I didn't see the fight thing. Remember that? That. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. I'll have to look that back. That lie. Yeah. That lie just crushed me. It's like, come on, bro. You got to fucking own it. But when he ever said Leno's are consistent, he's been consistent, and he meant he's it in wrong, a positive. Though. I mean, he's been consistently garbage. But right, he, yeah, yeah, but he, 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 on the, uh, he was on the opposite side of the spectrum, <laughs> praising him in a good way. Yeah, 100. Uh, oh that's God. what I, it's just, it's the Chicago Bear way to speak those things into existence and think that everybody's gonna you know cole's gonna play yeah we're gonna come out and we're gonna we're gonna get off the remember we're gonna get off the bus running and then fucking brian greasy would come out and throw the ball 46 times in a backup role you know it's just they do that shit and it it's i don't know it's sad it drives me crazy yeah absolutely it, it's 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 listen if this guy turns the and naggy i'm talking about turns this team around this is a huge game against a team that's in your division that you're better than i'm serious the chicago oh, yeah. bears are a better team than the minnesota vikings you can i 100 percent. i think phil we've said this for years cars i know that you're on the same thing that that team you saw uh kirk cousins running around like a fucking idiot when they won in soldier oh soldier God. field like you know night, what i mean to like get he was he, steve young getting yeah Super exactly yeah the, the the monkey's off my back you know what i mean oh thank oh. god i'm now two and 20 or whatever it yeah. is in prime time games yeah exactly. absolutely exactly it's unbelievable to me but i'm telling you the bears have to have this coach that have them prepared you can't come from what you did this week with the bootlegs and the running game obviously he's got to work on personnel but really he played into mitch's strengths you saw a mitch trubisky that really played some good football out there and made some plays all over with his feet with some throws so hopefully that's what we're going to get but anything else on naggy before we move on to our nah, first let's segment move let's move on all right, guys, you know this. If you're a new listener, we do this every week. It's called Bear Up, Bear Down. You guys in the chat are welcome to play as well. Today we got three of us playing. And Bear Up is the positive. It's the opposite of the song. Bear Down is your negative. We always start with the negative. Bear Down. Bear Down. So here we go. We always start it like this on this show. Phil Atosian, Shane Marshaw, The Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man around a bear up. This week, Draft Dr. Phil and Shane Marsaw, the smartest man. Bear ups and bear downs of the week. Oh, yeah. Bear up, bear down. Shane, you were last last week, so today you're going to be first, and we'll go across the screen and then back so shane you're bear down 
this week? I'm going to pick a bear down with a guy that actually made some plays and has been playing well, but it's for one particular play, Phil. I talked to you on the phone earlier today, and it drove me fucking crazy when it happened. I went back again tonight and looked at it, and it's a... It's a mentality, man, and that you can't let shit like that creep in. I know it ended up being a blowout and it didn't matter, but Roquan Smith on the the, the long play to Duke Johnson, he fucking took off and just, he fucking quit. He was booking down the fucking sideline and he fucking, he didn't get hurt. He pulled up and he ran to the fucking right and took himself completely out of the play for no reason at all. He was in on the next fucking play. And I'm like, this is this is your, one of your cornerstones that's been playing so fucking well. Now, don't get me wrong. He played he played good football, and he's been playing great football. What do you have? Two sacks. Two sacks, yep. But, Phil, that, that fucking, listen, I'm going to. Mario gonna, Edwards get two sacks credit? Correct. Yes, okay. yes. Mac a sack? Correct. But you just little things like that to me stick out, and it's it's a fucking mentality. I want a guy out there that's not Miami's gonna fucking going give up. In on this dude. Phil, I texted it to you I that know, day you immediately. It, it still sticks sticks with me. He was I there. Honestly, didn't even know he had a fucking it. angle, and he pulls up it like they're they're going down the sideline. He he veers off to the right and just walks away from the play. I'm like, what are you fucking doing? You're one of the most athletic, explosive players. On the fucking field for either team. And you took yourself out of the play because they're running 40 yards downfield. It bothered me. I don't like seeing shit like that. And that's something, Phil, as a head coach, you've been there. You've done this. I'm fucking I calling his ass, his ass out in front, of, in front of fucking everybody. And I know it's, like I said, I know it's a little different take because Roquan has been playing so good. But that play stood out to me, and it, it's been driving me nuts ever since Sunday. So, Roquan, you're my bear down for that one play in particular because you're better than that, man. Much better. There you go. I I thought he was tremendous in this game. He was. He I was, know, man. I'm not. I that's know. what I'm saying. I know it's a different take, yeah. but that, oh, but that that's play. What you do. You're keeping Phil, it a hundred. It's a game it. of fucking inches and plays like that. If, if if you're fighting for a playoff spot in week 17 against Green Bay, and he fucking does that, that that could dictate the outcome of the entire fucking of the that's game. That's a fumble on the ground, right? Exactly. That's awake that's James Anderson the staring at yeah. the fucking football. Listen, Absolutely. if if the coach did this accountability thing i'm telling you this team would rally and be so much better these types of plays that you're seeing that you're calling out here are used when we've had we had lemuel stinson he told you we had olin you know the coach puts it up there and breaks your balls there's no other place worse than in front of your peers and and really ultimately that's you know fucking twitter now Everyone got to be right, uh, whatever, on YouTube, trolls got to be, <laughs> that opens too long. It's like, you know what it takes to produce and be that? It's like, come on, enjoy, or fast forward. It's this little button, cars. All you it's very hard to find, Phil. I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I love you. I, I love don't know you. how you skip forward. Um, <laughs> it, 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 you're asking me too much. Uh, maybe you could start cleaning that up in post. That would be a lot better. Uh, we just clean all those mistakes up in post. Go ahead. Who is your bear down? Well played. Uh, I'm going to take Shane's normal week in and week out bear down in, yeah. in Eddie Jackson. Uh, he was going to, he was, if I wasn't going to go ro- pick. Listen, I know Chubbs was pissed off and saying, what the fuck? I'm talking about it. I don't like the one. That play just fucking irritated me. I don't want to see a guy giving up. Yes, he was. Well, and a guy who's taking the step, right? You want him to lay the. You got to. When you're making that leap and you want to be that guy, you don't take plays off, right? Like, for everything that he's done since then, Erlacher didn't take plays off, right? That wasn't something that he did single time. I just. lineup of folks so that it makes sense the thing about it is if you go back and watch it too if he if he kept on going he 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 could have made the fucking play or at least been there if something else did happen but he fucking just removed himself that's what that's what drove me i'm not saying that he played bad i know it's a different take but it just that shit stuck out but 
Cars, to your point, Eddie Jackson was my next guy in line, and this is a this is a fucking trend now with thirty nine. I mean, whether it's weak attempts at tackles, <clears throat> not being in the right place, and then not you know you're paid a hefty amount of money to pick yeah. that ball off, right? Yeah. And that's that's as gift baskety as they get for a safety, and uh, for that to to happen for a guy who for at least two weeks was the highest. He was playing in his dance football. before he fucking yeah. caught the ball. That's what he was doing. I mean, he was celebrating a touchdown that he had scored. So, um, excuse me, Eddie Jackson is my bear down. There you go. Listen, that's funny because those two weren't even on the top of my list. I'm going to part the course. It's too easy for the walrus. <laughs> I see a lot of people seeing... The tape never lies. The patrons, especially when I put up the defensive side, you know, we're going to talk about that. But let me talk about the negative. And it's clear to me, the worst player on the football field, it's not even close. And to be put into the game. Are you sure it's not J.P. Holtz? (laughs) That's who I'm talking about. J.P. Holtz (laughs) over Charles Leno. Listen, you have one job. You might play four plays. That's it. If you go out there, you you, five. if you half-ass that shit, and fucking, there is nothing worse to me as a foot, former football player. I went 100 miles and I don't give a fuck. I'm serious. 165, 170 pounds. I'll take anybody on. I would be that guy. Maybe I'm dumb, but you're on the pro level, and you fucking are getting paid, and you are fit blocking. Do you know what fit blocking is? That's walking up and just fitting your body on someone to wall them off like you're in a basketball game. You don't do that as a fullback. There is a code. There is a merit. There is something missing from this GM or coach, whoever has this guy. And it seems to be a trend here because it was fucking Mike Burton before him, Shane. Now it's this guy. They can't figure out the fullback position. They can't figure out the quarterback position. They can't figure out the offensive tackle position. What the fuck are they doing? Seriously. You think, I'm like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is our team. And we got shit at left tackle, shit at right tackle, a fullback that sucks. And we want our quarterback to have it all. We want him to do everything. Let's do it all. Quarterback, uh, receivers go to die? No. Fucking everybody's dying on offense because it's terrible. Offense coming to die here. Yeah, We're going to exactly. be this new transcend. Uh, Fuck. Uh, we are scoring 17 a game again. Shit. Until it fucking changes where you're going, hey, this motherfucker that fucking spits and breathes football, this corn husking motherfucker. Look at the fucking Ravens. They took a defensive lineman and created him, made him a fullback, Ricard. Yeah. He's like 6'3", 204, what? Maybe it's 300 pounds. Have you seen this dude block? It's like a freight train. It's like a fucking freight train. That's right. And here's this coach that was doing things like put Akeem Hicks in the backfield. Put this guy in the backfield. They put fucking, uh, what was his name, that played tight end. Oh, Sal. Uh, Sal. Sal yeah. actually was our best fullback in fucking five years. I'm serious. He, he went up and hit somebody, and it's it's terrible. So, yes, J.P. Holtz, you are my bear down. It is bad. It is so bad. Find me a fullback, someone who fucking loves football and loves to put somebody on their ass. That's a fullback. There's Je- Look, Jeff Burton, 6'3", 311 pounds, I'll take 6'3", 250 if they go in there and help out this line. You you would see a whole complete difference. JP is a waste, and so is the left tackle. Those are my those were my top two bear downs. And a Fetty too. He played poor as well. Oh, so three he's been such a letdown, right? Like it, Well last week he played pretty good until he let up the fucking sack, strip sack fumble. <laughs> It's like he got too confident. Like, all right, man, I get shit. There we go. Uh, exactly. It's it, it is tough. 
So Shane must have left to fix something. Should we wait for him or? Well, I mean, you get to go we're first. We're gonna go to anyway, our bear. We so we'll go bear up. Bear yeah. up. I'm gonna go bear up. I wanted to go last so I could pick a certain guy to defend him, but I think we'll talk about him. I'm gonna go with Mitch Trubisky for my bear up. Here's a kid. Listen, today just backed it up for me. He spoke truthfully. He looked like. He was fucking pissed off. He wasn't sitting high and mighty on a win. He actually called out the coach, maybe without knowing, three times. And the reality, I like that. I like a little fucking indifference in the relationship. And I want somebody that's in my locker room that wants to win. And that's what I saw today from Mitch. So how he played, though, the game was called the way... His talent is. So if you are good at doing certain things, it's imperative you as a coach or play caller get that. So when I watched him, he was accurate. He was on time. And there was plays where, yes, cars, he did the step out or he threw that leg up. And I diagnosed it. And I put it on front street. Because let me say this for the fucking trolls. I have no agenda. I don't care. I could be wrong. I don't care. I could be wrong about fucking Chris Godwin. He was my number one receiver. If he was sucked, I would be wrong about it. Look where he is. No one talks about all the rights. I don't have 1,500 fucking mock drafts. I have my rankings, and that's what I stick by and stick my neck out. Here's my thought on Mitch Trubisky. Today, on that tape, he fucking played his ass off and wanted to win. He threw the ball. In fact, one of his best throws should have been a pass interference on Allen Robinson in the end zone where he, he fucking got rid of this javelin toss and he fucking put it out there and stepped into it and it wasn't called. But ultimately, it should have. Mitch reading, obviously, cars. They made it half the field. They helped him, and that's okay. He missed a couple balls that I thought he could have taken, but he did check down when he didn't have it. Yep. He ran when he didn't have it. And those things you build on. So, Mitch Trubisky, you are my bear up this week. Cars, you're up. Uh, root so, for the jersey. That's so right. mine is, uh, is a guy that we were upset when they drafted, not because of talent, but because of where they did. But uh, Cole Komet is definitely uh, a lot of fun to watch when he gets the ball in his hands. You know, one of the, the pre-draft reports was, oh, hey, he doesn't go down with uh, first contact. And you see that continually in all these different plays. Um so I'm, I'm liking seeing him involved. He's throwing, showing some more movement than he's shown through the season. I think the run game coincides with him getting more snaps than than uh, Jimmy Graham, especially as a blocker. Uh, so I'm, I've really been happy with what he's done. And when they when they were talking about him coming off the field screaming, they can't bring me down, they're not going to stop me. Like that's the sort of thing you want out of your tight end. That's yes. as meatball-y as I get, right? But you want a tight end who is oh. too – too, for lack of a better phrase, too dumb to know that he shouldn't that like that <laughs> he shouldn't be doing that stuff and shouldn't be mouthing off, right? You want a little, you want a little attitude, you want a little smack talk, and if that's what he's becoming, I think that 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 pick doesn't look uh, to be. They need the, more the of that on was. offense. Absolutely, yes, they do. They need you know, dog. Jimmy Graham has seemingly lost some of that swagger a little bit. Um, Allen Robinson is playing. Uh, with more confidence in his Twitter game right now than he is in his offensive game. And so if if it's the youngest kid on offense right now that's going to set the tone, I'll take it. So Cole Komet, you're my bear up. Nice. I love it. I love what I saw from him, man. <clears throat> I'm totally on board with you, and it's okay. It's okay to have that little bit of a ball washer when it comes to that kind of attitude because to Shane's point, it's something this fucking team on the offensive side lacks. And here's these three young heads. Yeah. With a, and I'm saying Darnell Mooney, David Montgomery, and Cole Komet. I'll tell you are, one more player that's built like that that just they oh, refuse. Mustafer. 
Well, no, no, no. But I'm saying that the kid that they refuse. If you go back and you watch Riley Ridley at Georgia, he's that yeah, fucking guy that's got on him. that just that can't. energy. And I just, I don't. I can't. He's got to be shit. doing something behind the scenes. He's. He, I mean, I. Riley it's, Ridley's that guy that is on the team, then goes to another team, yep. and blows up. It's like I don't I understand. Every time he's in there, he does something positive. I've never. He's either blocking, he's getting open, he's making a and catch. Javon Wim said that two yard rush. I yeah. mean, yeah. I don't oh know why. More in the red zone. <laughs> in the red zone. They ran two jet sweeps in the red zone again. Hmm. Anyway. That was your bear up. Shane, Absolutely. who's your bear up? I'm going to go back on defense, and this is a this guy has been a favorite of mine, but unfortunately he's potentially got a little trouble brewing. He's got oh. some assault charges that were brought up. It, it sounds a little fishy, but like I said, I'm not going to touch any of that with a 10-foot pole. It's, it'll obviously work itself out. But, man, to me, Mario Edwards is a guy that I am offering a contract extension to today. To, to, to keep here because on this even with the trouble well no 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 I mean if that all works out yeah I'm just yeah. I'm I'm just I'm checking. saying yeah, I yeah. Say yeah. no 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 the mule the mule yeah yeah there he is Kona Kona safety there but... he is the mule's in the house sorry oh he's in there there he yeah, is yeah he's in the house yeah. tonight he's saying Kona Kona up. safety Lemonhead we love yeah, you we man. gotta Lemon we gotta we gotta get that drop Shane. Yeah, but uh, Mario Edwards is is the guy that's he impressed me so much on that one play with uh, he had Deshaun Watson one on one and Deshaun yes. tried to shake him a little bit and Mario stayed right with him and oh made the, made the play. That was a thing of beauty. I mean, that got me. If you're a patron. You gotta go over yep. there and watch that play. It's patience. Yep. It's anticipating the play. An explosion. I, and I mean, just he's, close it. Yeah. Know that. There's a possibility. I love. I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to bring it up tonight. It was one of my favorite plays because he prepared to understand that Deshaun is going to try to juke him, and he stayed his ground, kept his leverage, and yep. patiently went. And then he fucking tossed his ass down. It was such a great play, and he, the yep. way he beat the fucking. How about the last sack? Well, that's what I'm saying, Phil. <laughs> on this, on this defense, we, we've seen it time and time again where guys can't win their one on ones. Mario yeah. Edwards is doing that repeatedly, and he's only 26 years old, man. To me, he is a piece that you can, if everything works out legally. He is a guy to me. You he you goes, invest in to, to he move goes forward 100, with a hundred miles an hour on the field. He's everything we brought Lemuel up earlier talking about culture. He's everything Lemuel was talking about on yep. those defensive linemen that are going to play that way. I love it. I and, I'm there with you. I hope and this I think situation fucking me too, man. Because that's oh, that would be that would be a blow. I read it, and I think he's going to be even uh, if they are smart enough to bring him back if all this stuff goes to the wayside. Um, I think he's going to be even more motivated next year because he's so close with Eddie Goldman. You know, he, he got, he didn't get the chance to play with Eddie this year, college teammate, very, very close off the field. So that's going to be a lot of fun to watch, man. This he's, he's a young piece. You know, I, I was either, I was either going to go, I was going to stay on the defensive line because Bilal Nichols, I could have given it to also. Yeah, with Mario. Played. I mean, if everything checks out, you know, when we talk about cap hits and moves, right? Nakeem Hicks is definitely. Yep, one I know. Got to watch it, Mario. Again, if everything checks out, is definitely someone that can step yep. in and kind of fill that that void. So he's. Uh, yeah, I was. I don't know about you guys. When I saw that second sack at first, I completely expected them to throw a flag. Yeah, be like roughing <laughs> the passer yep. because you know you were you weren't gentle and didn't lay his head on a pillow at first, but. Uh, he's been fun for sure. Yeah, I really loved. Yeah, I so love Mario, this game. Go Mario ahead. Edwards, you are my bear up. Bear up, bear down. Let me say this real quick before we move to our next segment and having a quick show tonight. Uh, we're having a blizzard here 
in on the East Coast East, cars. Yes, we are. <laughs> uh, they've already closed my job down. Cars has a robot rarity. that shovels his driveway. <laughs> He's got his. Tesla. No, 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 I've got to do that myself. <laughs> Meet Cars Jetson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got to get this out of the way because if you're not, I saw my boy. He is Jeff Burton. He's paying attention to my video breakdown. I always laugh when people troll me. It's like no. I'm not there to I'm not there to debate you. I'm breaking down what I know on the football field. And I'm going to say this right now. Robert Quinn is not a bust. He is playing his ass off out there. He is technically sound. Whether he's injured or not, what I'm seeing on the tape doesn't lie. He is playing to what they're asking him to do, and he missed a sack. It happens. It sucks. He needs to make that fucking play. He does. But that doesn't negate what he's doing entirely for this defense. I'm talking about game stunts where he's coming inside, and guess who got the sack because he did that? Mario Edwards. Yeah. He destroys the guard and the tackle. Go over, become a subscriber to The Tape Never Lies. www. Shane, you can put the banner up. I'm getting there. www.thetapeneverlies. I break down the reality of tape versus Brad Biggs' story and this person's question. Now, yes, you want the sack numbers. This isn't I'm not excusing that. I want that. But he's they're going three-step game. There's one play, and it became, Cars, a national narrative. Look at this clown, the mm -hmm. Bears pay. This clown just got ear-holed from the blind side by Fells, and he fucking gets hit in the temple, knocked to the ground. You could tell he's dizzy. He gets up, and I have some troll saying he's loafing. He's lo he's loafing. He doesn't even know where he is. I'm surprised he's not in the p protocol. I'm telling you, listen, I'm going to be, I cheer for the jersey. I don't give a shit. I really don't. This football player gets held by fucking tonsil and tackled by the throat. He's going to have a sack. He's going to clean that sack. Gets held. These are the stories that you're not going to get from the blog boys. You're not, because they want to jump on a narrative. Quinn plays his ass off out there. I'll put my reputation on it. In fact, <laughs> Lemuel's in the, in the chat room. He was talking about Robert, calling him number 94. I don't know their names. Number 94, he plays hard. That's the reality. Okay, you don't have, it's not your money. 70 million and then the sacks right Shane and they start right. doing it quick his story isn't written yet he's here first year with T Pagano dropping him back in coverage playing man-to-man -man on a tight end for fucking seven plays what his job is and what he's doing out there really to me is it's it's unbelievable how harsh Chicago Bears fans are they were the same way on Khalil Mack they were, and I did a whole video series, and I've had s several people say thank you. Thank you for putting the spotlight on him, and I promise you, patrons, I am just going to put a spotlight on Robert Quinn, and you tell me what it's like to be a defensive end edge rusher when they're fucking triple teaming and double teaming edges. That makes me say Akeem Hicks needs to be better this is a guy that's been loafing on the tape got hurt detroit he played horrible in this game akeem played better he could be dominant with this thing and there's a reason why this fucking team is so good defensively and if those guys on the back end played with physicality and toughness like cars and you are like calling kyle, them out they all played like if, kyle fuller exactly if they all played like kyle fuller 100 percent cars this team would be unstoppable on defense so it's up to the coach it's up to everybody to get that out of them you could blame pagano but i am not i will put my reputation on what i've seen so far of robert quinn that it's completely wrong 
to chastise and I remember Art Best telling me it was the worst pace per signing the Chicago in the history of the Chicago Bears. That was his quote. I go, you forgot about Mike Glennon? <laughs> Did you forget about Mike Glennon? Because uh, honestly. And, there's like and 15 names that we can so, argue I said, the worst. I got five off the top of my head. I go, come on. Robert Quinn's story isn't even finished yet. There's my little dissertation. Don't worry about fucking sacks. Look at the whole picture. Who's helping? Sign up and become a subscriber and you'll be able to see that stuff right there here we go cars do you want to answer david cooper about brent i urban? did because that was go another ahead, guy real that quick I, yeah brent urban i think has definitely played himself into another contract he's yep. another guy for uh, his wife alone on twitter for, yeah, <laughs> he should be back he's one of the best twitter followers but i i love that comment because he's another guy to kind of phil's point you don't always see him in the stat column you don't always see him you know but he makes a play a game, right? One or two plays a game where you're just like, holy shit, where did that come from? And he's been moved all around the line. Um, so, like, he's not someone I ever question motor on. He's not someone that I'm seeing taking plays off, anything like that. So if if Hicks is someone that's gone, we talked about Edwards, Urban's another one of those names that you're going to use and see used a lot more frequently. I, I've been a, that guy's been such a great move for a, a, a low amount of money. Yeah, I love the way he plays the game. Oh yeah, he's striving to get better. He's not the fastest guy, but a, there are a some testament to gems. the defensive line coach. Oh, he's the he's probably the best coach on the whole oh. staff. I'm Hands serious. Down. Hands down. Uh, John Jenkins, friend of the show, he spoke so admirably. Of the guy, even when he was on another team, he's calling him, and he's like, "I can't tell you this stuff because I'm with the bear." <laughs> that's how much respect he has, and that's Jay Rogers. That's a that's... guy that really understands the teaching aspect of that position. But Shane, that's how you survive three coaching staffs, right? Because he was a trustman. That's right. Fox and now it's Maggie. So it three tells you coaching staffs. That's Two is a miracle in the NFL. Three is unheard of. Dumbest Tweets of the Week. Oh, yeah. The Dumbest Tweets of the Week. We do this every week, Shane. You hear that silky smooth transition, Claude? <laughs> it's all mine, baby. <laughs> that's how we do it we do these every week shane marsaw takes to the twitter sphere searching out dumb tweets first we always start with the negative and then we go to the positive tweets and shane we always do it in our way should I, we go here or is this better for tweets there you go go ahead i can't hear it you can't hear it no can you hear it cars there now we I go. Can. Now we can hear it. Ah, I gotcha. You're talking that shit to Claudia. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lemonhead Stinson's in the fucking chat room. Yeah. <laughs> He's the smartest man. He's a man of intellect, of honor, respect, and of course he's made many sins I'll tell you Pace has had much worse signings than the mighty Robert Quinn he's the smartest man and this is his dumbest tweet of the week there you go Shane big big responsibility here Whew. glad that's over I only got one more set to go I don't know how Claude does it each and every week I tell you <laughs> So let me uh, bring up my page here, Mr. Atoshin, and let's bring hop into some the of these questions. Yeah, here, take those me. take those comments here, off so we can see here. all of my dumb tweets in their beautiful splendor. Roll of so yeah, Trubisky's hitman, who happened to unfollow me this weekend during the game, which I was totally fine with because this guy's a complete jackass. I hope he's listening. Bears <laughs> fans. 
Give Montgomery the ball not, more. Wait, not Montgomery. Montgomery. Oh, oh yeah, Montgomery. So uh, he's not only a jackass, he can't spell. But Bears fans, give Montgomery the ball more. David Montgomery, outside of the 80-yard touchdown run, had seven carries for 24 yards. 3.2 yards per carry. Just shut the fuck up and let them work. P.S. Cordero Patterson had 4.8 yards per carry. <laughs> Ugh. By the so way, he's, let's he's just only move. changed his name back to Trubisky's hitman yeah. after he became the starter. Yeah. I got to oh, defend really my boy different. Chubbs. Chubbs was the first guy to to uh, hammer him when he tweeted that out. Because when I was taking the screenshot of the tweet, I saw Chubbs' comment on there. But, I mean, what the fucker? I mean, you want to be a fucking Homer fan? And you're gonna you, you're gonna put shit out there bagging on David Montgomery? Holy oh shit! God. You're a fucking moron. How do you? I hate and no offense to you, cars. This isn't even you. You would never <laughs> do this. This I is hate never listen. Nerds that. How do you just remove <laughs> eighty yard run like it fucking it didn't exist? And if you remove that, then his average is two point four. And then what? the you, fuck is that? You take those six touchdowns away, Mitch Drew against Tampa. He didn't have any that game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, outside of that, he did it. He did it. And outside that's of those problem. five completions, the guy was perfect. Like, yeah, but that he wasn't. That's kind of the Football point. is yeah. not numbers like that. You can't. He's averaging two. What is he averaging with the 80-yard run? Yeah. Tell me that. Tell me, tell, I mean, you haven't had an 80-yard run. This dude was pissed because on a second run, his overall average got cut in half. It went from fucking 80 to 40.2. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. He only had 11 fucking carries, yeah. jackass. The reality is you're 1-0, baby. You're 1-0. You beat the Texans, and here's David Montgomery sparking the team. Don't placate anybody that that kind of stuff just drives me crazy like you can't even compare the two on tape it doesn't even it's like how is are you at the goal line at the six and you're running toss to quarter patterson and you're not running it with david montgomery it just doesn't make any sense it's unbelievable it's that tweet yeah. Oh, you. And I that's have, not even I the worst. That's not more? even the worst one. That's we not even more the worst dumb one. Tweets. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, so yeah. What's up, Cherie? Cherie's <laughs> here. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, a, a new new voice. guy on the on the beat. New er oh. guy. Jason Jason Leisure. Uh, Kyle Brandt sent out a tweet because you know Cody Parkey missed the the kick the other night, and after he missed it. Uh, Brant set out a tweet, Cody Parkey will be appearing on the Today Show tomorrow morning talking about that missed field goal, obviously in reference to 2018 with the double doink, and then he went on the Today Show doing his victory lap and where they're praising him for how he handled with the fire. Well, Jason Leisure, always uh, pulling his pants down and showing them to everybody in public, tweeted this out in a response to Kyle Brandt. There's nothing more fun than mocking this guy for sending a really positive message to kids and speaking up, speaking up about his faith. Hilarious. Oh <laughs> I mean, God. Jason, take 35 seconds and just go back and know where you are, know who you're talking about, and know what happened. I mean, I know you're newer on the beat, but Jesus Christ, man. This is also the dumbass that said he wasn't working out at Soldier Field because of the traffic. <laughs> traffic. Yeah. Tra He's Dude got $9 guy. million guaranteed. If we'll rent a fucking helicopter then, asshole. He no, double no, doinked no, it. No, no. Does this, Pace this get in trouble for signing him for that $9 million? Is yeah. he a worse signing than Robert Quinn? I'm just asking. Uh, no, no, not after until today show. Yeah, but that, that <laughs> yeah. today show saved the whole move. That was there, there's it's no unbelievable. No. How many yards per carry did he have after eighty kicks? And uh, Jesus Christ, come on, leisure. I like leisure when he leads off and says, "Matt, are you worried about your job?" I like that, but that to me is yeah. I mean, no, no the. Know the fucking fan base that you're tweeting to. Know the room. To. Know Jesus, the room. I you guess gotta so. know the room. Jesus. God damn. So you're right. But yeah, that the, was that was a big thing. Those are my dumbest tweets, Phil. 
dumbest tweets of the week. We're gonna have positive tweets. I got some news. I got, oh, okay, we'll go with the news. After this, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason Leisure, go fuck yourself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the smartest man. He outkicked his coverage, and he found himself a Czech Lo Slovakian. He no, understands no. the truth. Different countries. You use don't. Montgomery in the red zone, and not a special teamer like Corderell Patterson. He's the smartest man, <laughs> and this is his best tweet of the week. Can you not correct me during the poem? You can correct me. <laughs> no, I, I tried so no, hard to find something that would rhyme with Patterson. No offense to you, Phil, but yeah. uh, we're gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to pick out a whole Czech different place. Yeah, that's kind of nice. To Czech Republic, Czechoslovakian. No, not, not the same. Not where the same. is she at? Czech Republic. All right, but aren't they she's... Czechoslovakians? No, no. What are those? That's like saying you're in Connecticut, so you're from Australia. I'm from the region. I'm from in Chicago. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. You got the You got the fucking Greg Braggs map. <laughs> I thought Czechoslovakian is Czech. No. 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 Uh, I suck at it. No, it's like a lot of people people have called her Russian too, and boy, that, that Ooh, never goes over. I've well. done that. You yeah. I apologize. I apologize. Yeah. So yes, these tweets of the week. Let's throw this one up here. Yeah, we mentioned this on BHL, but I think it still holds because I think it's going to be a big part of we do what we're doing moving forward with this team. Bears running back David Montgomery on center Sam Mustafer, who earned the job midway through the year because of injuries. You'd think he's been in the league for 10, 11, 12 years the way he comes at you and takes charge. He's the general on the line, and they buy in. This is an undrafted free agent getting his first starts. And you're running. Your starting tailback is saying that he's the general. I mean, which well, says is a lot he about Cody White. Exactly. Badly, right? I brought like, it up on BHL cars. That's a yep. great point, cars and Shane. It yep. drives me nuts, right? Because we we heard at the beginning, and I'm totally hijacking, and that's just what I do. But um, <laughs> you know, Castillo talked all off season about how he wanted to make White hit hair the leader of this line, and it's not. Not unlike, right, Mitch reading a book on becoming a leader. Some guys have it, some guys don't. And, it, you know, him coming into the line and the line looking a lot more solid, uh, I don't think is a, is a one-off in that regards. He sets a tone. It was like Kyle, Kyle Long when he was younger. He set a tone, and it's nice to see. Yeah, I like it. I just don't know who the starting running back is. I mean, it could be Patterson. I don't know what he thinks. Well, well listen, Buster, if you take I'm out just... all of his long runs, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's 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 only averaging two points. That was that Adam Rank's <laughs> overrated comment of the night. He goes, "Well, when what was it? When he got he got seventy two carries and the Patriots won the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. I'm like, well, who carries. was their quarterback, bro? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Adam was searching. I saw I saw the chat room was totally against adam yeah the the chat was definitely anti oh, adam anti rank, rank. i hope rank comes back you gotta yeah. oh you gotta he'll be back your comp company. he'll be back listen i suck at math and geography but i know football and yes you do mustafer to me <laughs> is stepping up and doesn't it does he has an attitude and a want to get better energy do you, I watch tape and I see guys like get beat on a play. How do they play the next play? How do they do that? That's yep. the kind of shit I try to show you in the patron stuff on defense as well as offense because I want you to see you have a shaded uh, defense, uh, defensive lineman or nose tackle. And I'm going to have my dad and I do this on the patron side, X's with the O's. We're going to put up some plays, talk about it and show you how difficult that is and Mustafer's trying to do it they're asking him to do it and he fails at it on one play and I show it but the very next play how does that player respond well he goes out there fucking totally fires out and gets to the second level 
and makes a key block. That's showing me that the game in the game matters. That's why it's so important that you guys understand narratives of PFF and these blog boys versus our network here and where we're going to stand on it. There's a reason why a lot of these people are copying what we do. And hey, I take it as a compliment. I it's can't... very telling that they mimic. It's very telling it that they... <laughs> and I. Th <laughs> Sorry, I, I had no pause and stood out. <laughs> that was pretty well played. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even get See, it. See, we knew there and was a reason we bring him on this show. <laughs> Cole's, oh uh, Cars is low-key fucking slaying people. <laughs> That's, what does. That's what we keep it 100 here. That's right. I honestly want to take some time out and thank the fans of our network, like, like Jeff Byrne, and Otis Nichols, and Jackal. <laughs> we'll do that in shout-outs. No, Let me finish the segment take, first. <laughs> I just want to thank them because of the, the things that we've asked you to do. Share it. Let people know. And in the last week, we've seen a big growth, not only on our YouTube channel. What, Shane, we can't go live on our YouTube channel. Everyone keeps asking. Yeah, the reason not until why, February. We have a little, did you see the update? They put like a clock down. Did you see that, Shane, on the YouTube studio? Oh, they did? Yeah. No. It goes, you have 60 more days. It oh, says, no, I guess I yeah. didn't see that. I go, at least you're Was getting that on the some app? sort of... That no, was on the app. It was on the, uh, the desktop it's on, version. It's on the desktop version. No, so let's check it out. What happened again? And I told Shane I'm going to do this. I'm sorry. I'm hijacking this part, but it just comes up and we don't have any script. Trent Shelton, we used his video and we gave him credit and we were very first show. We had no idea. We're talking about loyalty and brotherhood because we had just left the old network and we were obviously sending a message based on that and honestly, and it was the perfect message i mean if you do watch the video it was it was the perfect yeah message it was touching it was emotional and it still it resonated so shane found it i don't remember but he, i believe him 100 percent. he was like just put it as the audio i put it as the video me i fucked it up then yeah originally and, i just wanted the screen to be black and just hear the audio but either way it probably would have happened it's definitely <laughs> phil's fault but it's it's fine <laughs> so anyway that goes wrong is yeah yeah we got we yeah. got a copyright strike what that is we didn't even know is that they hold that against you and they shut down your ability to live stream on our channel <laughs> for 90 days michael wants to know where it is well we ain't airing it on here mike you're gonna have to look <laughs> it up yourself bro <laughs> you'll have to look it up uh trent shelton brotherhood loyalty put those in and you'll find the message and that we played and a big open some of you hate opens we love them and we have fun and it sets the tone that's why we do it and anyway copyright strike we find out three months first, later first strike you get shut down for 90 days. I'm like, what is this? Fucking Russia? Fucking the KGB just shut us down. It's like, oh my God. So they say in there you can fight it. And we were like, no, we keep it 100. We fucked up. We didn't even know we were fucked. We thought if you gave, because they make you take a class. I had to go to copyright class, <laughs> everything. To copyright. <laughs> so, so long story short. We fucking take the class. We think it's going to be removed. We find out it's 90 day and it's driving us crazy. So I email Trent Shelton. I DM Trent Shelton. I call the line for Trent Shelton. I email his people and they've ghosted us just to remove the copyright strike. The show's been removed. That was the first show. You can't even find it. Adam Rank was on that show. And... You would think that they would allow you to move on, and that's it. So when you ask, why isn't this show on YouTube? That's why we're there. So maybe if one of you fans reaches out and asks Trent to get in touch with us, just to answer us, even if it was, no, fuck y'all, whatever. But honestly, we came from a really good place, and we were spreading the message. And I always keep it 100. I said it to my father. He's very religious. I go, sometimes when you are religious, you got to practice what you preach. If you're talking brotherhood and we're sharing it, 
the loyalty and brotherhood message that came from you that resonated with us you shouldn't shut us down we weren't fucking making any money off of your words we were giving you credit so all we want is to remove that. 100% credit, so we yeah. Can, yeah, we even talked about his message and how amazing it was. So that is why we're not live on BHL or this show on our own channel. It drives me insane to the extent where I was like, Shane, fuck that. We're making our own channel where it's keeping it a 100 channel. And we go live there. And BHL channel, we go live there. I'm not going to be fucked shut down. But I guess YouTube is like that. So now you guys know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I fuck, I, even if they would return a call or an email. Yeah, I mean, I've I've sent four emails. I should post I've, what I wrote. So oh, no, 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 no. I think Jesus. that would just It was so to nice. The- it was an emotion. 2022, was... you guys would be live again. Yeah, exactly. Post yeah, we sent the one email at like 2.35 a.m. Because Once we the way that, out. The way that this works, this is live. So after the show, I have to download this, re-upload it to the separate the site because YouTube we can't. Thing. Yeah, for all you guys that are on YouTube. And it's it's a fucking process for, for sure. It sucks, so. but it is what it is. We caught you up on that. This is what we do on Keeping It 100. I'm not going to hide and try to portray. We fucked up. I apologize, Trent. I honestly feel it's ridiculous that we can't work this out and talk about it. I've DM'd him. I've emailed him. I've called called his people. Shane has emailed. So we could... The podcast is fine. Yeah. You could hear it on the podcast. It's still there. It's just YouTube pulled it off, and that's why. So we're counting down the days. We will have a celebratory show when we're back. It's going to be fun. I have some funny It'll ideas. go for 23 hours, and we'll do it on style. And we'll just... February so, what? what? I think it's, it's Valentine's a, it's Day. It's right around right? Valentine's perfect, Day. Perfect. Yeah, That'll be about the time I'll be able to finish this tweet segment if neither oh, one of you guys sorry, shut the ahead. fuck up. So, so Sorry. the last tweet, <laughs> Phil, you're gonna have to put on your reading glasses for this one because okay. this one's gonna, this Hold one's on. gonna, this one's gonna fuck you up. Them. There we yeah, go. there's our boy David Montgomery, and right, if you if go. you can see it, this, these are the the next gen stats, and if you look at it, his top speed on uh, Sunday on that 80 yard one was 20.33 wow. miles per hour. I mean that's. <laughs> He's not Obviously, fast, Shane. Yeah, really. The only thing that's faster than that is the fucking battery drain on Chubb's headphones. <laughs> <laughs> or he can't show up to our shows, right, <laughs> Chubbs? Bluetooth 1.0 will do yeah. that, too. <laughs> the original one earpiece thing, you know. But, you know, you hear David Montgomery talk. You know, he said he didn't take his, his diet and what he was putting into his body quite as serious as this year as he did last or he was taking it more serious this year as a rookie he said when i wanted donuts i went and got donuts when i wanted candy i went and got candy he's not doing that this year and i think that that's having a, a direct effect on his long speed because even in college you know he it college is different you you're not getting you know 10 inches of daylight or eight inches of daylight you're getting gaping holes and where you can get the long runs the NFL, just about everybody is fast, and it was. I was really, really glad for the kid to to, to bust that one off because he he. What was the one that he had against Green Bay? Was it six? What was his long run versus Green Bay? It oh, I was. Can't remember. Yeah, Hold it on. was. First, uh, he had a fifty-eight yarder against the Redskins. That was in two thousand nineteen, right? He had that big run. That was he had a long one versus San Diego or versus Ella the Chargers. Then he had a that long run Soldier against Field. 57 Chargers. against Green Bay. Yeah, so I knew it was up there, but there then he go. he housed this one, and I think I think that the hey football is a game of confidence. I think that that's something that he can he can build off. But unfortunately, our our head coach, you know, he might get seven carries this weekend. Who who knows? Yeah, if you join Patreon, you could see all the shows on YouTube. We're still streaming aloud there. Yep. 
And yeah, and we're not. Hey, we're always gonna keep it at a hundred here, right, Phil? Not like other, not like other shows. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. We're the three best friends that anyone could have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have, and we'll never, ever, 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 ever leave each other. <laughs> we're the three friends that anybody could have. I mean, the three best friends that anybody could have. The three best friends that anybody could have. So oh, that's the most that's weird the most shit. animated I've ever seen Jake in my little amount of time that I've known him. And that's the only instrument that Greg's ever let him play on the <laughs> fucking show was the the, the fucking birthday kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play, judge the rest of the region from those people from yeah. the region. That that's what I'm going with. Yeah. <laughs> I know Greg loves him some Lennon. I saw him in the chat just a couple of minutes ago. That's why I, that's why I uh, played that again. There he is. are nice. They're good. We need more of those. <laughs> Greg. Greg. I love you, Chuck. <laughs> you know what I picture, Greg? You remember Willy Wonka when the mother's like, Come back, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Where Who knew? Is Charlie, whoever had in the pool that we would start singing Willy Wonka songs uh, two yeah. hours in has won the pot this week. Jesus, if they win this week, that's you imagine Braggs if they beat the, the Vikings this weekend, he's gonna revert right to old Braggs. Listen, if you're not a patron member, that's fine. Get over there before the 31st. Your grandfather did. $7 a month. You're going to have pop-up shows the whole off-season. The coaches firing show. Is that going to be fireworks? Black and, Monday. And Not Rank, they go Rank has got to be happening. a man of his word. He's got to be a man of his word and come on. You'll have Greg Braggs coming on. We'll have a plenty of guests. Obviously, Cars. Claudia will be back, hopefully. If you haven't, if you are a patron, though, get over there to the TTNL shop right there, superiorembroidery.net. You can get some swag. You can put your name on the back, your number of your patron. If you're a fan of the network, you like the Tape Never Lie, you can get a Draft Dr. Phil, the Tape Never Lie shirt. You got face mask we're gonna have a smartest man t-shirt we're working on a car shirt uh, nerd alert nerd alert nerds matter two is a That's shirt right. we're working on we got a walrus shirt we're about to <laughs> speed bump charlie you can get one of those uh sheree's got a custom shirt so go over to the swag shop support the swag wear it with pride i'm sending some swag to a bunch of guests. That's the new thing we're doing. So, David Kaplan, your swag is on the way. Lemuel, yes, there's fat boy sizes. If uh, Alex Acevedo told me, guys, go all the way down. Scroll down. There's 3X, 4X down there. It's very, 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 very easy. They even have, uh, what are those things? Gators? Yeah. And, yeah. Oops, Cell phone cases, the tape never lies, network. Go over there. If it's check the it fill out. one, it'll actually, it's really cool. It'll actually interrupt you as you're on the phone. Yeah. And it'll be like, hold on, <laughs> wait a second. Midway through no, the call. No, it says real really cool. quick every time you try to talk. <laughs> real quick, real quick. <laughs> Listen, become a patron. I'm telling you, get it in there before the 31st. Christmas is up. You got a boyfriend, a girlfriend fiance a wife buy it for him be a part of the network we appreciate you actually i told shane we were gonna we're almost at 500 so let me double check where we are yeah, right now i'm looking oh, 487 we 480 get 480 to tom waddle for tom yep. waddle so whoever tom. number 500 is the 500th patron gets to choose the show that they're on the entire show with us yes the patron will be on like a saint, a patron saint. You'll get to come on the pre-show. You'll see the pre-show well behind the scenes well banter. Played. That's what we're going to call the show, patron saint. Yeah. Like you will it. be on the whole show. Here's more. Tea Springs. There's the tape never lie. That's where you can get the phone and the gators and all that stuff. 
We're taking care of business. I don't know if we have condoms yet, Jeff, but <laughs> Jesus, Jamie, the, the way swag we've reproduced, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to be a thing. <laughs> Listen, wear your stuff. Send some pictures to us. I want to put together a nice promo with you guys. Actually, real quick, next week, <laughs> the Christmas show, we are going to be live Tuesday night. Instead of Wednesday next week, it's Christmas week. And we are going to bring all patrons on for five minutes. So if you want to be a part of that and you're a patron, Shane's going to put a post in the patron uh, app or page. It's, the app sucks. We know. We fight with these people because we want stuff our creative way, but we have to play in the lanes of the TTNL condom lanes. So the patron app sucks sometimes, but it is what it is. Go in there. Shane, I'm putting you to work. Make a post. You want to be on that show? We're going to get everybody we possibly can on that show. But you got to bring hype. You can't come on here like Acevedo and Sandlin came on. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Charge, charge the headphones, Chubbs. <laughs> charge your headphones, Now's your chance. Chubbs. I really appreciate you guys signing up, supporting, and sharing. Even if you can't afford it, it's fine. We're just giving you some shit. We still love everybody. I know Patreon app is the worst. It's very confusing. We get it. But when it's You think changed, it's confusing it's on your end. It's even <laughs> worse on our end. Believe it's me, it's so terrible. It, it is bad on our end you have no idea but we figured out ways to work around the system around the system it worked Hopefully real well with youtube <laughs> George, yes. i am totally in it's gotta I be cars the face first one that on go out it's gotta be cars the car out. suck cut that's what we're gonna call it <laughs> <laughs> well listen have we got all of the business side was there anything else before we go to the no, predictions. I oh, I gotta do the BHL promo. It's the best Chicago Bears post game show on the planet. Bar none. It's Bears Hour Live immediately after each and every Bears game with host Shane, the smartest man, and draft Dr. Phil Otoshin. Every Sunday, Monday, or Thursday, immediately after Bears game. Your guys, draft Dr. Phil and Shane Marsaw are live on Bears Hour Live. Subscribe to the show via the Tape Never Lies Network, which can be found on YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and Twitch. It's the best Chicago Bears postgame show on the planet. Bears Hour Live. Oh, shit! Oh, yeah. Bears Hour Live, Claudio. Shouting out you. I wanted to shout out real quick. Just send some blessings. Jim... Larison yep. and his family have been also dealing with COVID. I know the Keep It 100 crew, without that guy, we're not even on this network. And his family and him, uh, I know it's been weeks of them dealing with it up and down. So, Claudio, so it's, look it, I don't know how many average per carry, but average COVID per, per the TTNL has been pretty high because you got two of our guys that have had to deal with that. Actually, three. The swag man. Remember, I, I wasn't yeah. supposed to say it, but I did say it, but I didn't know. <laughs> Thankfully, so, Phil, they can't uh, block this one because you are not protected by HIPAA violations yep. or have to sign anything. So I think we're all hey, right. We ain't paying Acevedo, so yeah, that is a quote. <laughs> We're good. You so, can throw yeah. him under the bus. Acevedo's had <laughs> so fucking curtains Jim in his Larson, house. And we got Claudio. <laughs> Three of our family have had to deal with it. It's very tough. I know some of you listeners and fans of the show have also had to deal with it. And our prayers are with you. Seriously. I try to answer every person that DMs me or asks me a question or whatever. If you're dealing with something and you're having a difficult time, I'm keeping it 100 right now. You could reach out to me. I know Shane's always open. Cars, whoever you want to talk to. Life is too short. If you're dealing with shit, it's too hard. I know a lot of people come to our show to laugh. But we keep it 100 too. We're serious. So 
reach out, no problem. I, I totally appreciate some of the stories that Shane and I have received about what we do here and how it helps your life. That means a lot to me, truly. I don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. Update on Claudio. The weed has actually helped him. There you go. Excellent. There you go. <laughs> So anyway, where are our predictions? Where is that? I'm looking for the, where is it? Is it gone? The predictions? Somewhere? Oh, right there. The bold predictions. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Please excuse me. I spelled prediction Boy, Claudio, wrong. it looks like it's not yeah. so easy. We, to you weren't going to use it this way. You weren't going to use it. No. Remember? We, even if I fuck up, you got to have it for the listener that's listening in their truck as well as somebody the visual and Cherie would be pissed. I can get her verified for you if you want if I didn't play this to open our last segment tonight. I mean, if I'm going to root for a team, I want to give it all I Next got. Next play. Pass. 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 There was no you rhyme or reason. just drove to... down the field. Mr. Montgomery breaks a huge run. If he scores on the run, you don't got to worry. But you do got to worry because he gets tackled at the freaking 15. There was no rhyme Next play, shotgun. What's your prediction? The old line is playing shitty. What's the skinny? No identity. If Nagy can't find it, there's a secret with the enemy. Red zone opportunity. Once again, they gotta settle for three. The reality of coaching when the defense has to carry the team. Prediction: What you think would happen versus what does? A light year from the Super Bowl, and now we're losing buzz. Nagy has no answers, just predictions that don't change. The segment is the truth. Give it by the guys and feel ashamed. There she is. She's fired up. I'm I'm happy. I'm actually a fan of that song. There you go. I'll put it out there. I've heard better. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a prediction, send it in the chat. I'm gonna share it. I'll go last. We'll start with our resident nerd. Give him a little nerd alert, Shane. Where is it? Nerd alert. There you go. Cars. Big win against the Texans. Blew them out after a horrible loss and a previous blowout to the rival. Here they go back against the Minnesota Vikings, who obviously we lost to on Monday Night Football. What are your thoughts here as the Bears go up to Minnesota? I don't give a fuck. So odd cue. So really that was and, so perfect. And really, that's what I think. So thanks, guys, for listening. I, I really took a lot of time to, to write and kind of come to that conclusion. Uh, <laughs> No, he, even had, he even had his mouth open, ready to yeah. speak when I hit yeah. that. I, I, was, I should have known better. I should have known better. I'm like, um, when's Phil going to stop talking? When's he going to stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> My index finger was like trembling. I was getting ready to hit it. You didn't want to miss your opening. <laughs> no. No, it, you know, the nice part is it will be good to have Montgomery this game. Uh, it will be good that Rashad Coward will not be playing at right tackle. Oh, yeah. So if you remember, right, we had <laughs> only Patterson and Coward the last time. So there's there's definitely some more hope. Look, it's going to be uh, – I have a very hard time picking the, the Bears against anybody right now uh, just simply because with the way this season has been – uh, you, you just don't know. But over the last uh, four games, that defense, I think, has given up uh, roughly about 20, 25 and a half points a game. Uh, I think they've only had one game in which they've held somebody under 370 yards of total offense. 
you always though throw that out uh, when it's a division game. So um, I am concerned just because. Uh, Mitch, the third worst team he is against is the Minnesota Vikings in his career. It's the it's the ones that give him the most fit and it's the use of his safeties uh, that throws him off the most. So that that is my biggest concern. That said, I have us losing twenty to seventeen to Minnesota. There uh, you go. There my you bold go. prediction, though, is that Kirk Cousins throws uh, a solid three interceptions uh, wow. this week. And the, Three and we lose. Yikes! Yeah. So you have yeah, I, Kirk Cousins winning. I, I do you like that? Um, I do. I it, it's very difficult for me to do. I I never like to bet on him. Uh, but I don't know. It, I have nightmares about uh, uh, about what we've seen our offense do against this defense. Well, there you go. What was your score again? 20 to 17 Vikings. 20 to 17 Vikings. Shane Marsaw. Look at that. I'm not a. Yeah, look at. See, he's switching the names I'm up. Trying to. There you go. There you go. I am not a big believer in the Minnesota Vikings. I never have been. And I think we're going to get. I think we're going to see. For whatever reason, I just have a feeling we're going to see a full team effort in Minnesota that we've been, that we've been waiting for. And maybe I'm losing my mind. I don't know. Maybe it's the Christmas spirit. Maybe it's because I told everybody I'm going to be a new dad. Maybe maybe I'm having a different there outlook. It is. Who, it's who coming knows? out. Who Girls knows? There we yeah. go. Congratulations. Yeah. Someone's Thanks. going to be a dad. Yeah, again. I'm take a pause right there. Wow. <laughs> and ironically, Shit. it was actually the mailman this time. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Now I could finally share it on the show. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if she's exactly enthused that I <laughs> told everybody, but she's sleeping probably, so we should be good. Well, but uh, yeah, this is man. a historical moment. Yes, yeah, the first T. It's the first TTNL baby, right? It is. Yeah, it definitely is. I'm and are we announcing the sex of the baby yeah we can yeah it's it's gonna be uh, a girl and we're gonna name it barb after the mother <laughs> greg's mom <laughs> oh ouch there it ouch, is. ouch. There, it is. <laughs> there it is yeah she he's knows he's calling you the grinch today look at him yeah see he's he's so rude greg yes. brushes his teeth in a red flannel every morning isn't that weird <laughs> he's, he's a weird I don't guy. even want to know how you know that. Uh, that because he sends me snap. He sends me snaps at six thirty in the morning he while he's brushing his, his teeth. Taco Bell order. Yeah, I actually <laughs> deleted that off my phone. I was taking up too much space. I could have loaded it up, but yeah, seven no. gordita crunches. But anyway, yeah. Congratulations, thanks, man. I'm very proud and finally relieved that it's out there because I was holding that secret. Yeah, we're gonna. Try the little girl this time, so that'll. What's bring... the baby's real name? Do you want to reveal it or not? Yeah, we're not going to go there yet. I don't okay. want to get completely castrated <laughs> live on air, but okay. um, I'm just... it'd be good ratings though. Yeah, <laughs> would be, would probably yeah. Get maybe to we, let's take some suggestions from the chat real quick. Yeah, yeah. we might we might go with Chubbs. I think would be a good name for my daughter. <laughs> Greg Arena. Yeah, keeps, Greg Arena. Keep saying that. Yeah. But yeah, you never know. We're we're open to, well, we're really not open to suggestions. But you can send them anyway. <laughs> but uh, no, it's I'm I'm excited. It's we've been through a lot, as you know, Phil. And yes, cars, yes. you know. But I'm gonna try to recreate this scene in the uh, delivery room. <laughs> obviously, we have so. to go live yeah. on Streamyard. <laughs> do keep it at a hundred live in your film. We're just on, I'm on with Phil. We're yeah, my, those are the, the the husbands that my wife hates. She has stories about. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> just smile, husband, please. Husband no, I would, on their Xboxes she would lose it, right? And like, can you push yeah. quieter? I'm on team chat with my buddies on Warzone, and she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna cut you for her." Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I. I would. Oh, I grew up in a house full of women, so I know. I know my. I know my place, but no, I'm I'm a, a throw up guy. 
I really have no interest in in that situation. I have no interest in anything below the the sheet <laughs> until you know the the kids pressure washed and everything. <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't do. Take it? No, I'm not. I'm not a big big. I mean, I did go down, and I'm I just thought like, I was like gonna be, but I my wife had to get the uh, cut. What is it called? Yeah, C section. That's C section. Yeah, so that's she tried to go naturally. Yeah. Please, do somebody it. please grab the clip of Shane going, I did go down. Like I yeah. exactly. like that I heard it's a clip. That's what well, it's she funny. Hoped. I was that's what I was sitting hoped. there and I had my this was two thousand eleven, so we still had a I did have an iPhone at the time, but we had a digital camera too and the the anesthesiologist said, Come on, man, we'll we'll go down, use your phone, I'll take some pictures of the camera of your baby and i'm like i looked at the pictures that he put on the digital camera and i almost fucking died i deleted like 30 of them i didn't even get i'm like no no No, no. i peeked over and i saw how they do it and i yeah i'm a bugged out guy i was not all of a sudden because she had two yeah so this baby comes out i'm like holy fuck this kid is big and the, the next, there's two that come out, and they're all gray, and they got stuff. And then oh, I hey, it's like, I, whoa. I'll own up. I'm I, Jake's calling me a wimp. Yeah, I. I think 100%. bullets wins the naming conversation. Phyllis Claudia is definitely <laughs> we got a Phyllis. Name. Yes, a Claudia. Peyton. How about I like it? How about this name here from Cal? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be it. You're gonna go with a hard no on that one. <laughs> Jordan Mar Jordan Marshall, Phyllis, Peyton. No, 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 no. nobody's even. Nobody's right. nobody's close. Listen, no, they tried. I was, yeah, I was. Virginia I McCaskey, Virginia. I think, would be a great Ginny, one. Ginny, Ginny, Ginny. Ginny. Jesus. <laughs> Shane's like, Phil, you said Guinea. I go, I'm a fuck Italian. I don't care. <laughs> Shit, never bothered me. Never did. No. Oh yeah, we did the, the C-section the, the first time, and that was, <laughs> I remember Ela saying, like, can you ask when they're gonna start? And I like peeked down. I'm like, oh, they they started. Oh, yeah. your shit's all out of you right now. Yeah. I'm like, that's, no. that's they've got some good drugs for that stuff for sure. Yep. Yeah, they do. No, I I well, I'm not good with that stuff. I'm I not can, good with heights. Yeah. And you know, gross things. When are you the guy? Like when your friend gets hurt or something, you can't stop laughing. Well, no, that's like Ela is yeah, I'm like like, I've, that. I, like I'm I've I'm a dude that will like uh like if I'm really really sick or whatever like if I you know if you have to like if you're gonna puke or whatever you gotta get up out of bed real fast and get into the bathroom like I'm the dude that gets up really fast and I go right back down and I'll fucking pass out <laughs> you know what really? I mean yeah and I did that one night and Riley was just a baby and I went face first into our dresser, and I broke oh, my geez. I broke my front tooth. I didn't know what the fuck was happening. I remember waking up, and Riley was screaming. And I look, and I'm like, "There's fucking blood all over the floor." Oh. And I look up, and there's Ela getting up out of bed. And I'm like, "Oh, she's gonna come save her boy." She stepped right over top of me and walked in the bathroom and went to the bathroom, came <laughs> back, stepped over top of me, got in the bed, and and went to bed. But yeah, that's how, that's how we rank. Uh, yeah. and for many rank, reasons yeah. rank these it was gonna be a hit tonight greg is right i he finally said something smart because i i'm glad i'm not a woman yeah if if well, if, if we were if men had to have babies there would be no babies nope fuck that yeah tough job women are strong i give props to stronger all than me i hey anybody that can't admit that's fucking lying to themselves yeah there's a lot of liars out there yeah but, but that's another show. That's why we made our own network. Woo! Hello. <laughs> Listen, real quick, because you didn't answer, Cars, your favorite Christmas movie. Uh, this one goes out to Ryan Cox. It's Die Hard. Uh, no, oh, I'm, that's I'm a, Adam Rank. You now too? I listen. I oh, I. My I, I yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Die Hard. I'm. It's a Wonderful Life. I love that story. I love that movie. Gives my me that. my actual favorite one is Polar Express. Right from like when oh. it's an actual Christmas oh, theme. Big I fan. Love, yeah. I oh, love that's that a one. great movie. 
And, it's uh, crazy when you realize that yeah. Tom had, yeah, we've done that here too, but it's crazy when you think that Tom Hanks like did just about all the fucking voices in that, in yeah. that movie. It's nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. Santa Claus is coming to town, Cherie says. Elf, <laughs> Elf is great. Look at this asshole. Who's this? Oh, Elf. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I think he just does it for a time. I don't even think his point. mother likes him. <laughs> Batman point. is not a Christmas movie. Elf Elf is excellent. If you have you watched the on Netflix the movies that made us and they do the Christmas ones? Yeah. They do Elf and Chris Farley Originally, was the yeah. one they wanted to play Elf and it's it's so cool. I love those. If you are not familiar with them check out the movies that made us they did home alone and ferris bueller's day off they've done a bunch and, and uh i know Car uh alex acevedo's favorite dirty dancing yeah did that <laughs> yeah nobody he puts is. baby in a corner i oh triple my. dog dare you i that i amazing. think that's overrated Christmas really story? yeah not a oh fan oh my god I, it's like I, can't because it's what? on tbs like it just all right. yeah but that's what makes it that's like no. shawshank they put it on over and over yeah but so people I say just, ah it's not that good no never been a I, to Dude, me that's like that would win my most eye? overrated really yeah, yeah. next yeah, week's show you guys gotta come prepared as patrons obviously we're gonna and we're drinking on. by the way yes we're gonna be drinking a i'm gonna have the what is it? Coke? Is it Coke? Some Puerto Rican film. No, That's no, cocaine. no. Cocaina? <laughs> no, what is it? Uh, someone in the chat, what's the Puerto Rican Christmas drink? I'm going to make sure I have that. Somebody. I c totally lost it. It was in my head. It's a Puerto Rican drink. It might be Coke. I could be right about it, but someone's saying trading places. Bring your Christmas. Oh, movies next places. week yeah no nope. eating. sorry coquito, ed coquito edwin thank you coquito totally I'll overrated christmas story completely overrated christmas story is my number two favorite christmas number two story. is the perfect spot for it because that's yeah it's shit <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up <laughs> anyway christmas lamar christmas loves vacation. that vacation christmas vacation yeah look at you all go. these peeps they're coming in hot with the coquito yes coquito. the delay is coming in hot man everybody's typing it, at the same is time is it delayed that much on their end yeah it is it sucks but hey what are you gonna do lastly on business side before we get the shout outs we did everything right do you want my prediction oh i didn't do prediction either what the no. fuck am i talking about we got mine was good enough for us all it's fine yeah <laughs> go ahead shane so you said I, the congratulations yeah. the right baby. thanks thank you thank you gotta you. see the baby jerry yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i think for whatever reason i feel like we're gonna get a full team effort we're gonna see the bears on a fast track we're not gonna see them on the the soldier field grass they're going to be a faster team up in minnesota and i'm going to pick chicago 27 minnesota 17. i think mitch nice. is gonna ha I, I think mitch is gonna come out and surprise some people even though i'm a little leery on that because i think that they're gonna obviously scheme to make him uncomfortable but i think i i saw you know a little bit of pissed off mitch and we'll see what happens and hopefully hopefully Nagy can can stick to david montgomery because even if you you might have three or four runs where you're not going to get anything but uh matt bowen spoke about it on the hogan johns podcast he's a guy that you need to get lathered up he's going to be a better running back in the third and fourth quarters and he's going to wear defenses down and that's exactly who he is so that's going to be a quarterback's best friend but uh yeah, I think we're going to see a better Bears uh, team this weekend, and I think we're going to see a complete team win finally. So 27-17 Bears. My big prediction? Yes. I'm going to say three more touchdowns for number 10. Three more passing touchdowns, correct? Yes. Yep. Three touchdown game by Mitchell David Trubisky. That is awesome. Listen, 
my bold predict my prediction uh shane took my number i was gonna go 27 17 so i'm gonna go 28 17 just to play the price is right listen i think the chicago bears are a better football team than the minnesota vikings and what better way to kick off being one and oh with bill laser calling plays <laughs> And Shane announcing he's going to have a daughter. Daughter. Did daughter. I say it okay? It's daughter. It's all right. All right. So Shane's going to have a daughter. And and first thing I'm going to teach her is that Bears. football is determined by what, Phil? Determination. determination. <laughs> I love it. Football is determined by determination, pride, love of the game. <laughs> you catch these things on our network you'll know what exactly what we're talking about um so i'm going to go 28 17 the chicago bears are going to be victorious and my bold prediction is david montgomery will get 16 and a half carries and it'll be <laughs> 16 and a half just for that one guy he'll do one out of the wildcat uh, and it'll yeah, hand exactly. it off that'll be exactly. the uh, the half you get me you get me it'll be a wildcat give so david montgomery oh, i'm just playing do you want a real prediction a prediction bold prediction i'm gonna say robert quinn gets two sacks oh boy this sunday that two would be bold. sacks two sacks this sunday for robert quinn that'll be my bold prediction so 28 17 bears we'll be here live right after the game on the best post game show on the bears on the planet and it's proven you guys have tremendous hopefully you join me and shane right after the game we'll be there bringing you on you want to get on the show shane already has a few people lined up for the show look at San Sunday. look at San sanlin's bold prediction Back-to-back -back carries from mine. <laughs> Sad but true. Oh, that's <laughs> bold. That is way too bold. If you find that David Montgomery gets back-to-back -back carries, please tag me on Facebook, and we'll all have a laugh on that because I haven't seen it yet. I'm waiting for the rhythm to be allowed. Remember, the rhythm is going to get you. Yeah. I was that? just about to say, is the great Gloria Estefan there you said, go. Uh, the rhythm is going to get you. Hopefully this guy allows Big it. plays are nice. They're good. We need more of those. Yeah, we so, need more. Yeah. more of We're those. still at 487, so if we can get to 500, Phil, by the Christmas show, the whoever number 500 is, if they'll be on if, for the whole show. They, if oh, they, they want to choose, they, they get to choose, on. but if they, it's going to be a fun show. I mean, we're going to be knocking back some drinks, just kind of chilling. We'll talk some football, but it's just going to be kind of a fun night and we're going to yeah. have you gotta be a you gotta things. be a patron to come on though. Favorite Christmas song. Yep. We got a bunch of questions for you. You have to be a days. patron to come on, so there's one way to look at it. That means Greg Braggs will not be on the show, Phil. <laughs> I know. He hasn't taken the dive and <laughs> he hasn't supported us. It's unbelievable to me. He could spend fucking forty eight bucks at Taco Bell. How many how many sevens go into forty eight cars? So seven times seven is forty-nine. I think so you gotta ask Mark six. Shimura. Oh wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I just right. got that. that was very well. <laughs> cars is low key dropping fucking nukes tonight. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love cars. Oh, holy night. Anyway, shout outs, guys. Shout out. We've gotten our predictions. I want to shout some people out tonight, Shane. Do you have anybody you want to shout out? I I'm I'm gonna shout out the little lady upstairs for for doing all the work. As you guys know, she's been she's still working full time, obviously, but been very very sick. And like I said, I'm glad that I'm not in her shoes because I see what she's going through every day, and it's it's not fun. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shout her out in case she's in hearing distance so it'll make me sound good at least <laughs> give me some give me some brownie points before christmas but no it's it's been a tough go for her with the, this pregnancy and it's it's no fun man phil you've cards you have too you, you guys have heard me 
yeah. talk about it and it's it's been it's been stressful and she she's a lot tougher person than I am I'll tell you that yeah really good shout out I mean you never lose any points if you shout out the wife but with your situation it's even yeah. bigger to do it. oh yeah <laughs> maybe someday you'll be off the couch and back upstairs <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe yeah, that, would, that would be that would be nice <laughs> Spencer Strong shout out segment. We had obviously great news with Spencer, his dad Ryan Cox. Every week we do this to honor. A patron. A patron. Oh, he is a patron, Gregory. And he understands the support he gives, doesn't go unnoticed. Always trying to give back to everybody that's a patron. Want to get you on the show, obviously. Want to get you if you want to be on the show next week, the Christmas episode Tuesday night. No guests, keeping it raw. Going to be talking about football, everything. Going in bareback. Going in bareback, getting pregnant. We're going to have a lot of fun. Make sure you're in on the Patreon app or go to the website and let Shane know. We're going to put a little post in there, almost like a sign up list. Remember in college? Yeah, like ping pong. You had to get on the. Stage. Yeah, just a heads up for anybody that is using, uh, that is a patron. We're gonna have to. We have to post a link that you're gonna be clicking on to come into Streamyard. So oh, yeah, if, yeah. Let me if tell you're... you this, you'll have to give us your email, or your cell phone, or a DM, DM on you. Twitter, on Facebook, you have or your whatever. Headphones and a smart device or a computer. And you'll get this link, you'll type in your name, you follow the directions, and then you'll pop up, and we're going to be hitting them off. We're going to actually get a timer, so we're going to keep everybody on a set regimen. Could we do that for the regular show? Yeah, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> we're doing good tonight, we're getting it. All right. Let's wrap last these up. Time. <laughs> <laughs> we got to figure out a way, we got to get a GIF, if we get someone... Where's our guy Kofi? Maybe Steven could do it. Give us a gift timer that we could put in the corner where Shy City is. Yeah, that should be able to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, just like five minutes each, and we'll go like that. All right. Look at, look at Cars. George. Look What's at George that? though, real quick. Next Tuesday's his wedding. You both can come on for five Bring minutes. Bring your wife. Bring on. her on. Well, if you're we'll... on the date, it'll be even better. George yeah. is from the West Coast with Adam yeah. Rank. I'll so not it. the region? Okay, that's yeah. good to know. It's not the region. <laughs> Cars, do you have a shout out? So I have a few. Uh, Edwin Lopez, whatever you are on every week, <laughs> I want it shipped to my house <laughs> every time. I don't want you to take it personally. Do you want me put say, your? You want me put your address up on the screen, Cars? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, I just know that I say and do everything just to upset you. It is my pride and joy. Um, also do want to shout out Ryan Cox for his horrible take on Die Hard not being a Christmas movie. Uh, Ryan, I love you, but you are totally wrong. Uh, you've never been more wrong, and uh, you, you're just wrong. Uh, but other than that, you know, um, I'm, I'm just here to never tell any lies, and, and that's really the way I'm going to gonna roll with it. Beautiful. I love it. Listen this is a season of giving obviously the bears we live and die with we break down the tape obviously if you're not a patron if you are a patron it's in the patron app it's up the tape never lies it's also on our youtube channel on the offensive side the condensed version uh if you're not a patron go over there and sign up appreciate you in the season of giving though i wanted to shout out jim larison and his family as well as Claudio, yeah. the barber, and his family. Dealing with the COVID virus is real. Protect yourself. Wear the mask. Wash your hands. Be proactive, not reactive. If you get it, then you, then things change. Don't be that person. Uh, in the season of giving, though, I wanted to shout out Dustin Combs. And I'm not going to really tell the whole story, but Dustin has gone out of his way to afford people that can't be a patron he paid for somebody's subscription yeah. and i just thought that is just an awesome thing to do and he's like let me know someone that 
you know, wants to be a patron really bad, but maybe can't afford it. Times are tough for some people. Seven dollars to someone's nothing, but for somebody else, it's big. And I, Dustin, did that. Uh, I didn't get any permission to to say the person who he did it for, but I just thought that needed to be a showcase of somebody's compassion, and it really meant a lot to me. I also wanted to shout out Jeremy Plashinsky. We call him the bouncer. He's keeping people a hundred getting into the free the private TTNL network. He uh, busts his ass. We don't even have to ask him to do it. He does it out of the kindness of his heart. He's just a great human being and a huge supporter of me and Shane previously and wanted to be involved in any way he possibly can. And I, he doesn't know that I was going to do this tonight, but I really wanted to let people know, you know, there's a lot of people that try to just jump in and play dumb to get into the private Facebook group and <sighs> oh stuff. My God. It's so funny. And it drives me crazy. Jeremy's all over it. He's like, don't you get involved with it or Shane, I got it. He gets the list, checks it twice. He's like Santa Claus. He's checking it twice. But those little things, because of what we're doing, and I hate to sound like that guy, but I just, I want you to put things into perspective that there's a lot of work that goes into editing and cutting tape and, and, and breaking it down, producing it, downloading it, uploading it. Just that stress that Shane and I have, like right after we finish, Shane's going to be stressed. If this fucking show, will it get up on our channel? It drives me insane every day just to fit it on my phone to get it up. So those th little things that somebody else on the team, our team does for us without even asking them mean a lot to me. So I wanted to thank him for that. All of you guys in the chat that go out of your way, Edwin, Alyssa, Brian Chambers, Chris Jackal, Ed, Kevin Wood, uh, Jake Baker, um, Chubbs is here every, uh, Cherie, Sandlin, Bear Truth 9, Tony, I saw you, Will Hill, all of you guys. Obviously, I truly appreciate the support. Uh, all the guests on BHL last week were awesome. Just tremendous. All of them patrons, Billings, uh, Dre, and my boy. Why did I just, I just lost his name. He was in the chat. The tenant, I'll just call him, isn't he Tennessee? What is oh, this? James. What is this? James, thank you. Fuck. Breadman. Yeah, Breadman. You guys were awesome. Keep it up. Make sure you guys know. Get in touch with Shane or me if you want to be on BHL, obviously, and this week into the chat. Yeah, it'll be a post on Patreon, and if you want in, reply to it. Leave me your where you want to be alerted of the link. It's going to need to be a Twitter DM, cell phone, wherever. You got to have your headphones and your mic ready to go because when I send you the link, we're not going to wait around five, ten minutes for you to get yeah. your stuff ready. Everybody be ready to go. Jump in. I think we can have ten people on at once. So if you're in the chat, in the waiting room, We'll bring people on one at a yeah, time. Phil's so. internet should be fucking glorious. When that happens. <laughs> hey, it's been good. Not during the rank interview, it wasn't. No? <laughs> no. Oh, you wait you till didn't you watch. tell me. Yeah, no, it was... Well, I didn't want to... The oh, audio was fine. Your visual was... Was it? Very distorted, yeah. Fuck. I thought I had a great night. Now you ruined it for me. Yeah, I know. It happened again. It did. So now I know it's... Got to be something on StreamYard then, because tonight all the numbers look great. Yeah. Anyway, let's end the show how we began it with a little Christmas outro. And you guys have a great night. Anybody want to say anything else before we leave? Buckle up. Three more weeks to go. There you go. Hi, boys and girls. It's your boy, Draft Dr. Dr. Phil. Phil. Bringing you a funky dope Christmas track. Have a fire coach naggy Christmas. Will be the best day of the year. Bears fans know that he must go. No identity makes it clear in year three. Have a fire coach naggy Christmas. 
Tired of the lies at Alice Hall. George needs to do the right thing to have some balls and fire them all. Oh no, the BU show center stage where all can see. Nagy talks down to you, another blowout on national TV. Have a fire coach, Nagy Christmas. Bear fans need some cheer. No more swaggy, have a fire coach, Nagy Christmas this year. Have a fire coach, Nagy Christmas will be the best day of the year. Bears fans know that he must go, no identity makes it clear. Have a fire coach, Nagy Christmas, tired of the lies at Hallis Hall. George needs to do the right thing to have some balls and fire them all. Oh no, the BU show, set us things where all can see. Nagy talks down to you, another blowout on national TV. Have a fire coach, Nagy Christmas will be the best day of the year. Oh, by golly, have a fire coach, Nagy Christmas this year. Keep it at 100.